Hello, everybody. Welcome to Swindler's Den and this week's a session of Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden here on. I already said it, Swindler's Den. Um, I don't think we have any huge announcements off the top, but be sure to be checking out our other series. On Sunday, we have The Lost Song of Fandover, and on Monday, we have Amoris. Both of those are at 7 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and they're crazy. They're good stuff. Um, uh, uh, oh, I think you might have to fix the layout, but um, because we 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 have a we have a blank space right now. Oh, but okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll figure that out. <laughs> um, that while we get that figured out, I will I will introduce our players. We're gonna start from the back this time with Doctor Phage. You threw him off. I threw him <laughs> off. He doesn't know what to say. Oh, he he went sorry. frozen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was I was composing my pre-stream tweet because I always go last. So, I, I was, so dying. <laughs> yes, dying. He, he cut out, but he's he's <laughs> he's playing Axel and he's dying right now. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> um, next in line is Tommy Taco. Hey, what's up? I'm Tommy Taco. Sorry for the display this week. Uh, I play Zavros Weinrin, the half. Elf Ranger. I have to remember all these halfies I play. <laughs> uh, uh, you can catch me here on Wednesdays for the Rhyme Game and Sunday for the Lost Song of Fandelver ran by Grizz. And you can check me out at twitch.tv forward slash Tommy Taco. Yeah, and shout out to Tommy for coming to us live from Louisiana on vacation. He took time out of his day to hang out at with us. So. Live at 14 Wally Street Louisiana, uh, what, what? Los Feliz, California. Um, <laughs> what the hell? This is a rabbit hole. I just wanted people to like believe I just gave out your real address, but yeah, it was too, wasn't good acting. <laughs> Next is Dido. Uh, hello, I'm Dido. I play Celeste, the halfling warlock who's trying to save everybody that's dying. Um, before we get to the next person, thank you, Equa, for that raid. The boy himself that runs a Morris. Next is Bumblescum, though. Hey, it's your boy, Bumblescum. I play Heinlein Sword Sword, the uh, human paladin. And I, too, apologize for Tommy Taco's display this week. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least is Grizzlock. I'm playing Orlin, and I think the less we see of Tommy Taco, the better. So... I don't know what I did. I just want to clarify that. <laughs> uh, usually I don't introduce myself, but hello. I am I am Bakazampi. Uh, don't worry about me. I just want people to know my name so you don't have to worry about it. Anyway, uh, la last session, our group was um, climbing, finishing their climb up the uh, Kelvin's Cairn uh, to head to find a missing a missing uh, group of adventurers themselves uh, that had been guided by Garrett, who is, was their initial their initial purpose for saving on this mountain. But once they found him, they went to find the party he was guiding as well, uh, who had been attacked by a yeti. So they continued further up Kelvin's Cairn, uh, where they found a bloody scene in front of an open cave. Uh, they soon entered the cave to find the remains of one of these party members, a goliath that was named Mokingo. Um, so they continued further into the cave, where they eventually found a a group a two a two group a group of two yeti uh, that were that were hanging out in their den. Uh, what they later found out to be the mother yeti and her child, who was holding on to another one of the the missing adventurers, a halfling by the name of Perilu. Uh, they swiftly dealt with the mother, and after dismissing the rest of the party out of the room uh orlin and zavros uh took care of the child putting it out of its possible uh uh, uh misery of being alone and if the off chance it survived becoming a full-grown yeti who would uh, go on to kill as well because i don't i don't think i mentioned it in the in the campaign at all but i mentioned it to zavros I think off screen uh, during character building, uh, the Yetis have been more and more commonly attacking uh, ten towns with the less resources they've had. So, uh, 
very fair to remove further Yeti attacks. But they continued outside the cave, but uh, Heinlein had gone a little bit forward from the party uh, and ran into the father abominable Yeti, who then proceeded to womp the party, <laughs> uh, knocking the majority of them unconscious and putting them into death saving throws. Uh, Axel attempted to block the Yeti from being able to chase the rest of the party so they could retreat, but they stayed to continue the fight uh, up until almost all of the party was down and making the decision that Garrett had previously, Orland decided to start descending the mountain uh, with uh, with Yeti possibly chasing after him so he could draw it away from his party, but Celeste was able to take it down before that was necessary. Now, two of our party hang in the balance. Uh, I will recap for people who aren't here what or weren't here what the status of our party is. So Highland is currently stable, but is unconscious still. Orlin is hanging out at 1 HP. Uh, uh, Celeste is very low as well. But Axel Four. and... 4 HP to be exact. Um, and Axel and Heinlein... Axel has made two death saving throws. Or not Heinlein, sorry, Zavros. Uh, so Axel's made two death saving throws at this point, And Zavros has made one. But Zavros also has something else going on. Which we will go to now for just a moment. I just want to clarify that I liked how whenever you mentioned how we had to dispatch the child, you made it sound as though being dead was better than being alone. Sometimes dead is better. I mean, it's a child in the middle of the, in the middle of the the tundra by yeah, himself. No. He doesn't have anybody to take care of him. That's what I was trying to go for. Words escaped me though, unfortunately. So, Zavros, you again, you have woken up in this forest. Um, trees loom over you casting shadow but there is no snow uh there is a very dim light uh as you look around this forest you hear things moving around you through the undergrowth uh trees are being strangled by thorny vines but they're so wide and thick that they've they're able to continue living even with all these vines wrapping around them uh and off in the distance, you saw three figures moving through this undergrowth. Uh, the figures at this point are just out of your bow range. So they're quite a ways off still. But you can see them. Um, and what is it that you want to do? Um, I don't know like where the hell I am. But I see some shadows coming after me. So I'm going to be like running i guess i don't know what the hell that I, is i will say so the fi the fi three figures off in the distance don't seem to be coming towards you but you do hear sounds around you um i don't know if i explained oh, okay. that well enough yeah uh i guess at that point i would probably just like kind of hide off to the side and uh try to get a look uh, about what i hear all right uh make a perception check and i believe you have two levels of disadvantage still right is that this campaign <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm exhausted, so you, too. You have disadvantage, then. Two levels of exhaustion. I think I said two levels of disadvantage. I meant exhaustion. I was like, double disadvantage. Double disadvantage. Okay, uh, there we go. Okay, what, uh, perception? Perception, yep. In nine. So, you, you can't quite make out the figures from here, um, or what noises are around you. You hear, like branches snapping um, as something moves along the ground and slight rustle of leaves as something goes through the branches. But you aren't able to make out those figures or what's around you. But you do see directly in front of you, swirling from what seems to be nothingness, an orb appears of white light that you can tell there's something within that light, but the light itself seems to obscure whatever that body is. It's very small. It's probably The orb's probably about this big. Um, you can make out some small dragonfly-like wings extending from this orb as it spins in front of you, and then it begins to shoot off towards these figures. And we'll go back to the rest of the party. So, uh, it is currently Orlin's turn. Uh, I'm not going to go to the map because there's not much need to. You're all within less than 30 feet of each other, if whatever you want to do is with each other. 
Um, so yeah, Orlin. Currently, we have two people. You have three people laying on the ground, and the Yeti has just fallen. Uh, so you can see smoke coming from the burning hair upon it. All right. Uh, I'll run over to Zavros, um, and I'll get down and start, you know, give him chest compressions or whatever it looks like he needs. All right. Give me mouth give to me. mouth, Daddy. <laughs> give me a medicine check. I was too afraid to kiss you before, but <laughs> you're unconscious. This is this is not a good situation. Never mind. I take that back. <laughs> Twenty-one. 21, you start to feel... So, give me another medicine check just to see how he's doing. You, you, you like, as you're doing these chest compressions, you can feel the the breath begin to stabilize. Um, but at a 15, you do notice that it, it almost seems like... So, Zavros is pretty pale to begin with, just being a half-elf. Um, he has a little bit of a tan to him because he's not from Icewind Dale, but... He still seems incredibly pale currently. Um, again, the body seems to be taking to the the compressions that you're doing, and it seems to be stabilizing, but it just seems weird how pale he is currently. Dermot. Celeste, can you do anything? Um, with that, we will move over. Once again to Zavros. It is his turn order, so we'll go back to him. I'll be flopping music back and forth. Um, so, uh, was Celeste you... saying something? Because it looked like she was talking, but... I didn't me, hear her. She's oh, muted. Sorry, I forgot I was muted. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, I, I can. I can when I can. Well, hurry. Right, that's, little person. I, that's why I just went on. I'm like, she's not saying anything, so I don't know. Um... So yes, you, once again, you see this this orb of light in front of you uh, in this dark forest, and you've just tried to hide. Uh, you weren't able to see anything or hear what is around you. Okay, so this this uh, light, it kind of showed up, sprouted dragonfly wings, and then flew off, correct? Yep. I guess I'm going to like start tracking that thing. All right. I um, make all right. a Zelda... Yeah, it, so bad it right flew now. towards <laughs> it flew towards where those figures were. So I don't know how you want to proceed. Um, if you're gonna try and continue be, staying in the underbrush, stealthily. or just stealthily. Very cool. All right, stealthily. make make a stealth check for me. I was about to say, did it tell me to listen at all? <laughs> a oh man, a fifteen. But there's my nat twenty for the session right there. Go on. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, um, so uh, as you're moving closer towards these figures, you start to make them out a little bit more. Um, you can see they're, they're moving in almost like a triangle shape. So the, you can see the one in front and the one closest to you easily enough, but the one behind that one is still a little bit obs obscured. Uh, the, the one that's in the back part of the triangle formation, you can see is a feminine figure, holds your hand up, and then just very quickly points in your direction without making a sound. You can see her mouth moves, but she does. It doesn't appear to say anything. Um, this is a very. It's a. It's an elven woman. As you get closer, uh, you can see there's like markings on her face. You don't know if they're makeup or if it's part of her. Um, and you would know that this is a wood elf from uh, the the way she dresses and kind of a darker, darker skin as well as this red hair that's tied up into a bun. And the instant she makes the gesture towards you, you can see the one in front of her, a, a unlike, unlike the wood elf who has a more, an outfit that more fits going through this very dense jungle, the one in front of her has this long flowing, sparkling ice blue gown that doesn't seem to be uh, disturbed by moving through the underbrush at all. It doesn't catch on any branches or anything. Uh, and you can see her skin is also just a very pale white and the snow white hair that has two antlers coming out of it. And you would know this to be one of the Eladrin uh, who turns to look at you as well. And before we continue with that, we're moving on to the next person. Back to something scary. This. <laughs> um, 
we have next, so people are still hiding in the cave. Uh, for those of you who don't remember, uh, Garrett, Perry Lou, and Boy who are hiding further back in the cave so that they didn't uh, get, get attacked by the Yeti. Um, but Axel, I need you to whisper me a death saving throw, please. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. The next in turn order is Celeste. Yeah, so my my uh, next person that I was going to go to was uh, Axel. I'm going to drag over my healer's kit again and try and stabilize him if I can. I believe healer's kit just lets you stabilize, correct? It, it does, yes, without using a medicine check. Yeah, so you're able to look over Axel's body. You can see these large uh, rip marks from the from the Yeti's claws, um, and you kind of bandage them over with your healer's kit and stop the bleeding, uh, put tourniquets where needed, and he begins to look better and stabilize. So Axel, hey, big you... Man. Not today. Not today, big man. And she kind of taps him on the cheek a little bit. And Orlin can see her basically kind of sitting on his chest, trying to bandage this big guy up. He will be fine. Help Zavros. And then, um, I will. Uh, it, it, he's he's next on the list. Don't don't worry. And I'll make my way over to wherever Zavros is, which probably wasn't very far away. You're like, you're like in an L shape with each other. It's like Zavros to you and Axel, so very close together. But That's my next... action. All right. Any bonus actions from you? I don't have any bonus actions right now. Very cool. Um, it is then Orlin's turn. Um, I'm just gonna continue. Technically, so technically, everybody is safe. I will say, <laughs> we're all good. Um, so we can come out of turn turn order. So I'll let you guys do some stuff here for a little bit, kind of figure out what's going on before we continue with Zavros' stuff. Uh, so after I was done with Axel, I would kind of look over. I would look over um, Beast Boy's body to uh, make sure he is, you know, not gonna die anytime soon. Is that was Beast Boy to you? Yes. <laughs> I can turn into animals and I have a green skin. <laughs> yeah, uh, do a medicine check. Okay. And since I still have my, yeah, I get a D4 to that because of my um, medicine, medical intuition to my half lane thingy, which is good because I have a horrible medicine. 16 uh, plus 18. 18. Yeah, so 18. So yeah, you can tell like the body is sustaining itself so like the heart's pumping fine uh in fact you can see that the heart's pumping fine because you can see the veins through his skin with how pale he's become um it it just seems like something is missing not medically though does he seem like he ha is under some kind of condition that lesser restoration might be able to fix? Like, Seems like, no. Lesser restoration probably wouldn't cover this. Um, you, this is something you haven't seen before. It's very strange. Because, uh, like, again, the body's working like it should. The lungs are m breathing. Like, he's taking air in and out. Um, and his blood's pumping. Uh, he's even starting to shiver a little bit. But it just seems like something is missing from the body that you aren't quite able to put your finger on. I mean, his his body's fine. Nothing nothing's wrong with him. He's his body's pumping blood the way it needs to. Um, he might need a fire. He's starting to shiver a little bit. Yes, let's get him um, a fire. Yeah, help me move him against gonna... the wall. Okay, give me just one second. I'm gonna pull out a wire and cast a message to Garrett. Was that his name? Yep. Everything safe is up up here. You should bring the other the other one so we can try and get everybody warm and then i'll tr help try and get um zavros by everybody else so that we can make a fire um 
Garrett will come out with Perry Lou and Boy. Um, what, uh, what happened? Is everybody okay? Every, everyone's stable for for now. We just we got to keep everybody warm. Uh, the, the mountain winds will catch the fire if you stay out here. You should come inside if we assume everything's dead now, right? There's three of them. I don't I don't think anything else would be coming back. It protect you from the winds <laughs> if we stay inside here. At least the opening. Ha old, old man, do you think? Old man is Orland. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you think you can keep a fire going for about 10 minutes? Yes. Um, as for the yetis, uh, I don't know for sure, but I feel like uh, they're probably territorial creatures. So, one family per den, hopefully. I would think so, yeah. They, they seem to travel far to find food and stay to themselves otherwise um yeah so celeste is gonna find like a central area that everybody is and she's gonna start um rubbing her like her her stick between her hands and it's gonna start glowing and glowing and glowing and after 10 minutes she's gonna slam it into the ground and use her last spell slot to do prayer of healing to heal six people. But I'll let you deal with Zavros, because that's going to yeah. take ten minutes. Alright, we will go back to Zavros then. As the uh, the remaining group gets everybody safe inside the uh, the cave there and begin to heal up, Zavros, we go back to you. You have seen um, uh, this, this uh, female wood elf point out your position um, as the the winter ladrin, female winter ladrin in the front turns to look at you as well, uh, you can see that even the figure you can't make out quite yet, uh, who's obscured by the wood elf, are all carrying bows, um, and they have picked out your position. I was about to ask if I, I could pick out if they were carrying weapons. Yep, all of them have uh, long bows. Yep. Yeah, I guess at that point I would probably just. Oh, well, uh, hello there, and I kind of just come out of the bush with my hand raised, just kind of like one hand rubbing the back of my head, the other one's kind of just waving. Uh, you can see the, the, both the Eladrin and the Wood Elf seem to, uh, relax a little bit, seeing a, another, uh, Elven kin, um, and the, the, the small white orb that you've seen in your past, I'm sure you're aware of at this point, is like spinning around by them. And the figure from behind the wood elf moves to be able to look at you, and you see uh, long black raven hair, and instantly you can make out the features, especially the ears, which are a little bit shorter than a full elf would have. Um, and as this half elf looks at you, she says, Zavros, what are you doing here? And you're sucked back. And you are in darkness at this point, but you start to feel the warmth of the prayer of healing wash over you. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so everybody will get 11 healing. Uh, not everyone. Um, the whole party will, plus the tiefling, Perilu, will uh, all get 11. Halfling. The teethling is still missing. Okay, the halfling. Perilou will all get 11 points of healing. That's six. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's six. All right. Uh, you all get healed up for that much, and you, uh, everybody who is down begins to take in air more regularly, and eyes begin to flutter open. Uh, as Immediately, as Heinlein says, you healed the halfling and not the dog? I, I healed the dog when the dog no, was I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Are we in the cave right now? Uh, yeah, I believe everybody's in like the mouth of the cave, yeah. Do we get do we get dragged into the cave then? Or I'll check with Orlin and Celeste. Did you guys end up pulling them into the cave? I know it was suggested no. or not. Okay. I kept them out there because I'm a little halfling trying to help drag a big Goliath. Sure. <laughs> so it I did the prayer of healing. Them. 
Yeah, I had the. So I went down right next to this. I went down right next to this Yeti, right? Like yeah, you were Yeti pretty close like a... to the cave opening. Yeah. I think okay. all three of us are like surrounding him. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say if my eyes open up and I'm like, oh, and I like look and I just see like this Yeti laying in front of me, I'll probably like freak out a little bit. Like, oh, and, like just like start dragging myself up against the wall, swinging my short sword out in front of me. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Settle down there. You're going to poke an eye out. Is it weak? I'll run over to him. Oh. oh, my head hurts quite a lot. I want to like lift his arms and stuff and check like his his if he's still paler or not. The yeah, you can back. see the color starts to come back to his skin. <sighs> Slap him in the face. <laughs> Good. You're gonna make it through. Why do you slap people when they wake up? Out of excitement. Oh, what happened? Oh, oh go ahead. Uh, we were fighting the Yeti. Things were looking rough. Everyone Things were looking real rough. Went down besides Celeste and I. I was on the other end of the uh, entrance from you. Everyone went down. But now everybody's up. Silver linings of gold. Thank you for that. Mr. Heinlein? Big man, how are you guys feeling? I look over at Heinlein and just like make eye contact like they don't know Did you want to live? I don't waking up from this isn't pleasant. I see now why you thought about just staying not alive. Heinlein is kind of taking in the howling winds, the darkness, uh, the crackling fire. Um, he hears him speak to him, but he just lays there looking at the darkness of the ceiling of the cave. Uh, without really a response from Heinlein, um, I'll just like kind of if I can reach him, just, like, pat him on the foot again. Because Heinlein... Heinlein always seems to be going through some shit. Just, like, he's always got something going on. And we'll get to that eventually. Um, but then, look around to everyone else and be like, so we had... At the one point, we had a large thing of mead. Is that going? Is, are all the, the drinks going? Oh, yes. Me and, uh... Me and Highland may have drank it all at the uh, abandoned inn. No worries. It's unfortunate. And Celeste pulls out some of hers. Oh, great, great. Um, you can see at this point, Garrett walks forward and puts a torch into the fire and lights his torch up. Uh, could you guys watch over Perry Lou while I go further up the mountain. I'm still missing a person. I'm not going to leave him out there. I know you need to rest. You've been through a lot, and I thank you for it, but my job's not done yet. Should be a lot easier. Uh, I don't... Now. I don't... Uh, what if there's another Yeti out there at the top, or one was hunting that Yeti? We can't just let you up there by yourself. Shouldn't be too far. We're pretty close to the, the summit on this part. Um, this part of Calvin's Cairn. It's not the main summit, so it doesn't go as high. But I I don't want to I don't want to ask you for more than you have to. I know you you just went through a lot, so I'm not going to stop you if you want to come with. But I understand if you don't want to either. I think you will be all right. Like I said, I'm sure Yeti's a Quite territorial. 
Joe. Probably all of them. I yeah, but what if he, what if there's a... I mean, but there are other dangers than just the Yeti on a mountain. And you don't always worry about what's under the sea. The sea itself. I'm sure mountains aren't much different. How often do you make these trips? Uh, in this general area, it's only been a handful of times. I've been up and down these mountains more than I can count. The specific one. Just a handful. I'm sure he knows his way around. There is also the possibility that the big one went up there and uh, attacked it and the person might be injured and the big one came back to check on its family, so it probably would be a good idea to go see if they're alright. I mean, if you guys can stay here, I mean, if, if whoever's up there is injured, I can take my handy-dandy kit up there and at least start patching them up. That would be, that would be, I'd be most grateful if, if you could do that, yes. Alright, well, come with me then. Oh. Go with I, I'm going to leverage myself up, and as I'm doing so, say, well, I would like to see if this uh, Makungo had there's anything to this uh, Goliath legend that he was seeking. There are any traces up there as well. Well, come with. All right. Thank you. Um, and he leads you to out of the cave. And you start heading up towards the top of the mountain. Uh, people who stayed behind, did, did you want to talk about anything? I just start cutting the this fucking yeti up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could you, you can kind of get it closer to the entrance. So you're able to. Um, I assume you want to get the the hide, which has been yes around the feet and ankles burned quite a bit, um, but the rest of it is pretty well intact, other than the arrow holes and slashes it has. But you'll be able to get get good enough. Better, better off than the moose for the most part. Um, and if you want to roll survival, I don't know if Orland's helping to get other yeah. bits that are intact. Um, spine like flakes, Zavros. I need spine flakes. <laughs> it ate. Yeah, this thing, this thing didn't like the insides didn't turn out as well as the outsides um, that had just been beaten up, and it's it's an older. A bottle yeti too, so it's just kind of been falling apart in general. Um, well, it's a good thing we have two more. <laughs> yeah, you're you're able to get like most of the meat is just done for, so you won't get anything off. That. I don't know if you want to eat yeti. That's that's uh, no. I'm mostly looking kind of for where you draw like, the line. <laughs> trophy yeah, so you, and hides. I want to gather the hides of all the yetis that we killed. Yeah, you you get At the uh, you get the hide easy enough. Um, <clears throat> if you want the horns or like the the uh, teeth at all, you're able to get some of the teeth. The horns don't come off as nice as you'd want them to. There's still large parts of skull attached to them. Um, and then other than that, you probably get a couple piece. Like, you could probably break some of the ribs, but most of the insides are just done for at this point. Here is a very important question. Uh, out of game, so I know how this works in yeah. game. Um... When you say you're getting the hides of all the yetis, can you elaborate? Uh, well, he got the hide of this one, so it's the... Right, it's the, he got the, the hide fur. of this one. The fur and skin, yeah. I assume... Yes, I am taking the, the child's yeti okay. too. Okay. Uh, as well. Yeah, we haven't we haven't gone to the other two we yet. Yeah. Um, this is just for the main one at this point. Just eventually, we... I will be getting that one as well. If that's what you okay. want me to elaborate on, it is kind yes. of demented, but yes. I'm I'm wondering because I want to know when that happens. If it's just a lump of fur where it's not obvious, or if you're like, I I want to know to like when that happens, just how maybe clear it is that you took it, the child's yeti skin too. That's all. 
Well, I mean, I can just go ahead and tell you whenever I get done with them, like I'm going to bundle them all up together okay. so they're easier to carry. So it's yeah, going to be all like rolled up, up like there. blankets. Okay, that's good to know. All right. Yeah, I'm going to hold them up. Which one looks better on me? <laughs> yeah, he's going to wear it as a onesie. <laughs> Um, so we'll go with the, the scouting party. Come out party. looking like the kid from where the wild things are. <laughs> like, ah! Oh. Uh, we'll go further up with the rest of the party. Uh, so you, you start heading your way up the mountain, um, getting higher up. Um, and you come to the edge of a vast and deep crevasse, uh, with nowhere to go but down. You see, a little further away from you, a collapsed tent lies half buried in snow just near the precipice. Uh, jutting out from a nearby snowbank is a pair of blue leather boots. Next to this grim display, a figure in cold weather clothing sits in the snow, her knees pulled up to tight to her chest, horns protruding from underneath the figure's fur-lined coat. Garrett, I, is this your person, or is this some somebody else's person? It's like her clothing, yes, yeah, so we can get closer to find out exactly, just to identify. She doesn't seem to be moving much, though. I don't... I don't have high hopes for the outcome. Well, we should be quick, then. All right, Garrett. Go over. Garrett approaches as well. Do you come with Axel, or do you stay back? Um, I would be coming with as well, but keeping an eye out for um, anything that may be approaching us as well. All right. Uh, make a perception check for me. An 18. Um, so from the 18, you don't hear anything coming up on you. Uh, you just hear the winds pushing the snow over the side of this uh, crevasse. And as you make your way closer, um, and Garrett pulls back the hood to see the face, you see a teethling with white skin, uh, a pale white skin, these white eyes, and uh, horns that kind of curl around her head that are very familiar to you. No. She can, you know, like, it, oh. it's, yeah, it's hard to tell because of how her eyes are. There's not like there's not the pupils in them, but you can see she was looking directly at these blue boots that are in the snow. Jared, is this your Axel? <laughs> um, Axel stops dead in his tracks, like not even paying attention to anything else that is happening. Um, just. Lost him. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go up to this person because I don't know who it is, um, and I'd check for signs of life. She's very skeptical but optimistic. Um, I want to double check with Axel to see what he's doing because we got uh, we got that you stopped and we didn't get what the very end of it. Sock's still not paying attention. To Sarah. Okay, very cool. Um, just staring at the body. Uh, yeah, Gears like the, yeah this this is Asterix. So probably froze up here just out in the elements but yeah if you want to do a medicine check or i don't know what kind of check you're looking for here i would like to do a medicine check just to make sure that she actually is the dead dead it's not gonna matter six six yeah um i mean yeah it's from what you can tell it's the she seems to have frozen here just staring at these boots not sure how long she's been dead, but she's not. She's, she's staring at the boots. She's not wearing the boots. She's staring at these boots that are attached to a body covered in snow. Sorry, I didn't uh, specify that. The So the uh, jutting out of a nearby snowbank is a pair of blue leather boots. And they seem to be attached and... to something. Well, she, gonna... she... Go over to the boots. And dig them out, like dig up the bodies that they're attached to. Was there anybody else in your party, Garrett? There's a pair of boots here. No, there there shouldn't have been anybody else, and she wouldn't have had this 
camping equipment. To, he points to the tent that's been collapsed by snow as well. Um, and you begin to dig into the snowbank and you pull out a dwarf. You assume, you have to assume because the head is missing from the dwarf. Hmm. Why? Why would? Why would she just stare at a pair of boots until she died? Um, you can do insight checks if you'd like for that. I'm not good at those, but sure. Thirteen. A thirteen. Oh, at the thirteen, you look like how she was looking at these boots, and. Just looking at these boots and hearing the whipping wind around you, um, and even yourself start to feel like you can start to feel uh, a depression setting in just staring at these boots. And you can assume if you were by yourself trapped on a mountain and this is all you had to look at was a dead body with these blue boots against a snowy background and dark skies that... It's probably just what the only thing she had to look at until she froze to death. Can I look through this tent to see if there's anything of use or even identifiable in there? Yeah, do an investigation. Okay. And you're just looking at the uh, tent? I'm going to get the, uh, Never mind, I was going to give him guidance, but he won't. Okay, and you're just looking in the tent, correct? Um, I mean, I would be the tent and the box, but um, something like that. If we could identify this person, um, uh, so within the tent and the box, you find like some frying pans, general adventurer's equipment, like a rope, um, some pittons, uh, climbing equipment and stuff. Um, but as you're looking around, you kind of glance back at uh, uh, Asterix, um, the the teethling, uh, you can see that she kind of carried a book on her that's kind of bound to the outside of her on a, like a book strap. Um, it might have been on the inside at one point. Maybe she moved it when she was desperately trying to find something to do while she was up here waiting to be rescued. Um, as well as there seems to be a bottle with a liquid sitting next to her. Um, I'm going to, just because of trouble, um, I'm going to gather up the climbing equipment, um, because the dwarf isn't going to need it anymore. Um, and then I'm going to, um, very carefully in the sense, or res carefully in the sense of, like, respectfully, um, like, arrange, uh, so it's a more, like, peaceful pose, and then collect the bottle in the book as well the battle in the book um there's unfortunately not much we can do for her now uh, we've identified her and that's probably the best we can do i we can't really afford to drag a body down the mountain at this point oh well did you know asterix not not fairly well i know she came here a few years ago from uh, fire spear something like that i don't remember exactly i didn't get much information from her i know she was here helping okingo and perilu uh, i don't think they knew her very well either mostly just a, a spell caster that lived in the area and was helping them out i guess do you know where she or they were staying in ten town uh, <clears throat> they they were staying. <laughs> uh, last, last I heard from them, uh, well, Mokingo had come from, from the spire, a while ago. Uh, he was trying to find this, this, uh, what, whatever he called it, um, to get in good favor with with his his tribe again. But from what I heard, most of them kind of came from the Targos area. Uh, 
But like you said, there is not much else we can do for them here. So we should get back where it is, at least out of the wind. Yes, let's get back to the others. Uh, I guess count our blessings that we found Perilu, at least. And you guys will be in the head back down the mountain, back to the rest of the group. Um, as you do so, actually, you begin to walk back. Like, you, you hang back for just a second. And as you begin heading down, you see a figure in the sky. Um, as from behind this large figure, flapping wings, uh, you see auras start to fill the sky. As you know, Ariel is once again casting her spell to continue the everlasting rhyme in Icewind Dale and keep the sun away as you head back down the mountainside. You know, me and Oriole can, like, we we got similar hearts when it's keeping the sun away. <laughs> oh, yeah, you rejoin your group in the cave. It's so, because uh, you did just see the auroras being cast, you know it's midnight at this point. Um, so it's up to you how you guys want to proceed the rest of your evening. If you want to climb down at midnight, that's up to you as well. Or if you just want to keep shelter here, if you want to keep watch, you can. I'll leave it up to you. I, I think, I don't think any of us are really in a position to climb down a mountain right now. Mm-hmm. Um, Heinlein's, uh, in the meantime, while they've been gone, and while, um, Zavros has been cutting Yeti, uh, Heinlein's just been, like, doing, like, basic sword stance and, like, step, step, thrust, step, step, thrust, things like that, uh, just the basics, um, like, very, like, almost like he's trying to keep himself warm, but he's, like, mostly focused on that, and he doesn't really, like, respond to people in this while well, he's like this. He's almost it's like almost trance like, but it's very like focused. And I believe we wanted to do some more more uh dressing of Yetis. So if if you two want to do that now, um you can do that and we can get I I know Zavris typically dresses them but if Orlin wants to try his hand at it, he can with advantage. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be, it'd be flat. Because if not, him. if not, it's going to be two days before I can even get a good dressing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a flat roll for you, so you still have a pretty good chance of doing it. But You know, Zavros, uh, one of these days I'm going to have to learn how to do this myself. So, uh, you know, what if you just show me the ropes and I'll, I'll try my hand at this one. All right, I look at him like one eye is like just bags all over the place, man, just covered in blood. And I'm just like, oh, I think this is mine. <laughs> Wiping it off. 13. Uh, 13's okay enough that you're able to, again, you get the hide uh, and the horns and fangs just fine. Um, and I'll let you, I don't know how, like, I want to incorporate these things you're pulling from uh, creatures at some point. I don't, I'll let you choose one thing from this Yeti that works out well. I don't know if you have anything in mind. <laughs> uh, this, which, this would be like the female Yeti, yep. right? Hmm. Yep. So that, did they have horns? I figured... Yes, they're smaller. I yeah, smaller than the the, what's in it very cool um and if you want to do another one to practice on the bait the t yeti tyke as well what do you think uh tommy should i give it another go or do you it's like well well then it's up to you uh you did pretty good job with the female uh well well yeah you well, get the high... him, so it w oh yeah yeah i was reading something completely different <laughs> yep he gets the, he gets the 12 so you'd get the hide again um the horns are much smaller on the tyke um mm -hmm. so i don't know if, if i you... if i can give you one suggestion um at least i don't know the one-to-one -one on yeti to human <laughs> but the the child yeti most of its spine shouldn't be fused together yet so it'd be like a rare 
yeti child bone <laughs> <laughs> that you couldn't get from the other yetis. Make sure you get its spine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do that. I'll get some some yeti spine from the, the, the right. child. Alright, and I assume you just wrap them up in each other like you were saying before. Um, You probably wouldn't have brought the male with you, so you probably just wrap the the tyke inside the females um, and bring them back to the front. You got a lot of hides to carry around, my guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I won't be carrying them around that long. I've got yeah, a reason true. for having them. <laughs> Very true. All right. Let's do that. And if you guys want to do anything else on that, again, decide on I... who wants to take watches, if at all. I, uh, walking down the mountain, I just wanted to ask Garrett, where did you say Asterix was from? Firestar? Fire Spear, I think it was. I, I don't remember for sure. Uh, they kind of talk Is... to themselves mostly. I don't ask too many questions as long as I can get, that, well. That, that doesn't sound like anything around ten towns really close that I've heard of. No, she came from outside of the the spire before the the never ending winter and started. Would I know where this ice spire is being from not ten towns? Um Fire Spear? Let me check to make sure I'm even saying the name right. I might be saying it completely wrong, to be fair. Uh 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 where is my D and D stuff? Uh grab the map that Chris gives me. See, fire shear is what it is. So yeah, it's. I mean, it's close enough to Luskin. You would have heard of it. It's down the coast. Um, yeah, it's like it's before the spine. So wait, you mean fire shear? The the cave? The the mining cave? Yeah, that's that's what sounds right. Yeah, they. She came from that area. Spellcaster from a mining cave? That's kind of odd. You don't see those every day. Yeah, I don't. Didn't ask them too many questions, but it's what I heard, what I heard from them at least. Well, maybe if I head back that way, if I can get out of this freezing cold tundra, maybe I can see if Asterix had any family. That'd be nice, uh, but uh, that's that's uh, high hopes to be getting out of Icewind Dale anytime soon. Plan for the worst, hope for the best. You still, you still got that good spirit in you. That's hard to come by nowadays. I mean, heck, I just defeated a Yeti and saved a whole bunch of people. That you did, and I thank you for There's it. There's always a reason to drink, good or bad. <laughs> right, Axel? And I'll hand him another drink from my tankard. Oh, didn't give it back. Well, she has another time. one. Okay, so I'll take that. <laughs> but she does have two, so... <laughs> Then maybe Axel's gonna grab one. that. Axel's gonna grab that one from you too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So, are we doing watches? Or are we just kind of sleeping on our own time and hoping for the best? Take a watch. I'll take a watch. All right. Yeah, I'll take a watch. Well. You'll watch. What is the fire situation? Yes. Um. Do you guys have? Tinder and things to keep this thing going, or is it going to be magical the whole time? That's a good question. Because I believe if it's magical, Orlin has to be a way for it to stay yeah, up. I, would, I think um, I, would... I have a Tinder box which has Tinder in it. Okay, that'll go for a little bit. It won't last a full night because that also kind of starts a fire. So, the way create bonfire works is that. I have I concentrate on it for up to a minute. So the bonfire only lasts a minute, but it also catches stuff on fire. So you would just need stuff. I would to need stuff to like, yeah, to keep the fire going. 
Uh, um, let me just double check some because I might have some to help you that you've seen. Uh, uh, um. oh, hey, hey, Beast Boy, how flammable are Yeti bones? I mean, they're like normal bones, I'd imagine. They probably won't be on fire very long if you can get them to catch. Okay, um, so in the room where the female Yeti was and the Tyke, there was a smashed dog sled as well that I didn't mention previously, but there is one in there. Oh. I guess we can camp out in that are, room. Yeah. Are we concerned with the fire for warmth? That's what my concern was, yeah. I think the second half of act of uh, what you were saying got out. Oh, so you're concerned for warmth, not just for light? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. if we're if we're staying in the cave, um, mm -hmm. I don't think we're gonna make eight hours. <laughs> Like, without some kind of warmth of some sort. Do we think that the sleds would be enough? Or the sleds, sorry. Not the Question, how hot does your create bonfire get things? Hot enough to ignite. Could you sustain it long enough to where you could heat up stones really hot? And then we could wrap them and then put them in our sleeping bags? Perhaps. I could keep, uh... I'm always suggesting this because literally when we went camping here in Utah years ago, we, like, would put stones in the fire and then wrap them in, like, these leather pouches and we would sleep with them to stay warm. Smart idea. How Jeez. long do they stay warm? Oh, these For things are in the fire for three hours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, perhaps would they stay warm in in this environment though? That that's why I'm asking. I, like, yeah, I only I only say that because like, um, you know, like if you have it a is a frozen water, wasteland where you can't even like yeah dig in the ground yeah. out here. It's so frozen. If we're so concerned about body heat, just sleep in a pile of people. Your body heat will keep each other warm. With the rocks, uh, we could light the sled on fire, and then while that's lit, we just put the rocks in. It buys enough time for the rocks to get warm. We also could, it would not be the most pleasant smelling, but uh, from the Yetis, it would be flammable and could help keep other less flammable things burning for a while longer. Well, I mean, without the fur, um, I don't know how uh, easy it is going to be to get them to ignite. Usually it takes a whole lot of heat to get the bodies to burn like that. If you recall from our oh. time in Lonely Wood. I was thinking more of just like chunks of fat and then other chunks of perhaps less flammable things. Because the fat should be huge. Hmm. Also, I think uh, it might make sense if we start, if we light the fire out here instead. I don't know how much it's going to spook the kid. If we do it right in there. <laughs> that rose just it. drinks us from his water skin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perhaps we should 
climb down the mountain today. I take one look at Zavros after he says that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I think there's absolutely no way we're having us move down today at this moment. I think there's people here who are beyond exhausted, who's been putting a lot of work in for everyone. And I think they deserve some time to sleep. That is a good point, though. Are we concerned about the young Yeti attacking any of us while we sleep? I mean, if we have watches, I think we should be fine. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought, like, Axel was still in the room when, said, when we were like, all right, we're going to handle this. No. And then he left. No, uh, I believe Zavros said... Oh, oh, I know, I know what he's saying. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Because I think there was, like, the implication they were going yeah, to do that. Yeah, I assume it was implied. It wasn't, it wasn't straight out said to Axel, but it was implied. But that... I, I do think Heinlein yeah. left before that. Heinlein did. Oh, yeah. I left. Yeah, Heinlein yeah. was already gone. Yeah. Heinlein I think, was long gone. Yeah, because Garrett, Boy, and Axel were still there when you guys implied that people should leave the room for what was going to happen next, so. Yeah. Um, hold on, my. So I guess theoretically, possibly I Axel knows that the kid's dead. <laughs> yeah. I retract my previous statement then. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Island. Uh, we put the little one down. Uh, it's just a piercing uh, green eyes as a quick like snaps to you to looking at you at that statement I suppose that's no surprise shouldn't be it's a mercy to both it and the rest of humanity yes I'm sure you understand mercy just well hmm I do Uh, and then he glances back at Zavros as well. I'm just drinking my water, homie. <laughs> <laughs> stare, dead ass stare. I'm not like I, I can see you in my peripherals, but I'm just sipping my water. I mean, you could tell that. I guess if like you were really glancing at me, you could tell it's a topic I'm very uncomfortable with. Yeah, yeah, I imagine so. Uh, you were down on yourself for shooting a ghost. I, I imagine, <laughs> uh, there'd be some kind of, uh, uh, yeah, awkwardness to it. Um, he, he does give glances to literally everyone at this point, too. Um, after hearing this. All right, well... Fine, then. I guess we can go back in there and camp in there. I don't I don't mind taking first watch. You guys had a little hard, a bunch harder than I did today. Sure. Right. So you guys move the camp back then to the yeah. the back room? So, okay. Yeah, um, and the the the, the sled itself is pretty smashed up, so it's pretty easy to pull uh, wood off of it and splinters and shards from around it to keep the fire going throughout the night. And I'm not going to make you roll anything. Nothing's going to come and mess you up. Um, you've had plenty to deal with today. So uh, we the dragon just... comes. The, the dragon cave. comes in. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to talk to each other. If you do have things to say to each other, we can do that. Otherwise, we can go to a full rest. Uh, we have a finger up from Axel. Do you have some to talk with with your companions? Yeah, I. Or anything. Yes, else. I would. Um, during the, yeah, during the watches, um, I would take either the watch before or after, or like easiest. Um, and just like as our um, watches are overlapping, just uh, say to him. Uh, 
Evelyn, do you remember the um, um, topic we talked about with Mila? Yes. Um, and Axel looks around and like lowers his voice and makes sure that everyone's like very asleep and not awake or anything like that. The 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 the. Damn it! Damn it! <laughs> this group. And now we'll never know. First run, oh. run it back. Run it back. Hello? Run it back. Yep, you cut out. Uh-oh. His video though does look like he's having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hello. Oh, okay, okay. there he is. He's stable. Back. Yes. Okay. 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 What was the last thing I said? Oh, <laughs> uh, you had lowered your voice. Oh. oh. Um. <laughs> so I say, uh, the tiefling, the aster with this group I believe they are the one Mila was impersonating the tiefling that went up here to hunt the yeti yes I don't understand how or why or then but they did have, um, and I'm going to pull out the book, at least. Don't know. I, um, I have not had time to look at it, but you are more of the scholarly sort. Don't know if this will have any information time if you wish to look at it. Um, perhaps, I mean, they were a magic user. Either other magics or perhaps more about their... Who's... Tricks, but... Yes, I'll, I'll give it to read over. And as I grab it, can I, I... Just like looking at it, does it look like a spell book? If I flip it open, does it look like... Yeah. This is a spell book. Sweet. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it appears uh, to be its uh, her spell book. Well, I hope it is of use to you then. I'm sure it will be. And if I find anything in here, any notes about Armila, I'll let you know. I would appreciate that. Thank you. That's all I got then. Alright. Um, Orla, do you look through this book on your watch? Uh, yeah. Alright. Get ready for some spells. So you flip through, the, <laughs> you flip through this book, um, and you find it's mostly just wizard spells. So you can assume this was the book she used to cast her spells. Um, the spells that are included in here are Alter Self, Cloud of Daggers, Comprehend Languages, Detect Magic, Expedious Retreat, Scorching Ray. Shield, Suggestion, and Tensor's Floating Disc. Sweet. Uh, I missed a couple of those, but that's okay. I can send them to you at another point as well. Yeah, that's all right. It would take me a very long time to get all of these into my yeah. spell book anyways, and a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So other than that, we can speed to the morning... Um, because everything's fine. Nothing is going to go near Yeti Cave, and if, especially if they don't know that they're dead. Um, and you guys can start heading out to, I assume, down the mountain at this point. Um, 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 um. So you, again, you make your way towards uh the the steep cliffside that you had. A little, not too bad of trouble climbing up previously, but we do have to do some checks to get back down it. So it's going to be a little bit easier going down than it is up, especially if you fall. Um, so, Gravity will be on our side. Yeah. Um, so you you lose a level of exhaustion, Zavros. You're down to one. Um, 
And we can do that. Axel, I know you picked up some climbing gear previously. So if you want to use that, Garrett also has his. Um, and we can do some strength checks. It, uh, people climbing down with climbing gear will have advantage. But I don't know if you want Is, to do an order. Did, did we leave our rope and stuff like that from the climb up? Or... Is it like a thing we can rehook down and come back down? Yeah, you can rehook it down. And actually, it'd be, yeah, because you're going down, you could just set it up from the top. Um, and you yeah. can use essentially two sets of climbing equipment going down. So everybody will get advantage on this. Um, and it's only one check this time instead of the three. A little bit easier to do to get down. So. Were we doing. Uh, sorry, checks sorry. Athletics? Um, athletics checks. Hey, I'm, I'm going to cast. Terrible. Four. Never mind. I'm gonna cast guidance on myself. <laughs> okay. Does it? It's athletic. Oh, it doesn't roll the defense. I rolled a one. <laughs> you rolled a seven because one, it's flat. You rolled a seven because it's flat. But oh yeah, that's true. I keep forgetting that. I'm. I'm... No, I still have. Oh yeah, because advantage. It's flat. Okay. Yep. Good. Yep. Yep. So I was like, I die. <laughs> everybody gets down, and you're just waiting for Zaphyrus to climb down. And he, like, he put starts rappelling backwards and slips and just falls the twenty feet down to take eleven damage as you just impact against the snow and rock. You know, if you would have, if you would have waited, I could have helped you. This kid is a mess. <laughs> He's supposed to be a beast boy, right? Like. Monster Slayer, Big Hunter guy, right? I'm still alive! <laughs> Believe it or not, I You're have welcome. seen him slay a monster. Um, and it was on purpose, by the way. <laughs> Just like storm ball. <laughs> Just snow all in my black hair and in <laughs> like the, the tufts of like my outfit and everything. Just like we all recall. The day he slayed that fox with his trap. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love it. As you, as Zavros brushes himself off and you recollect yourself, so you continue heading down. Uh, you go past the point where the avalanche had hit you the previous day. Um, and as you get to the area where there was this large rock outcropping with goats on it, um, you see some tracks in the snow that go off a different direction on the mountain. Uh, it seems to be a sled, um, and there are some large footprints uh, that are in the center of the sled tracks. So either follow the sled or pull the sled. But up to you if you want to further continue on or if you want to just go down the mountain. I'm sorry. I think I blanked for a second. Have we already passed the where we left the mummy? No. no. So you haven't. So that's you know, this is Yes. So this is kind of like the first level of the mountain where you were first coming up and you passed the goats. So you haven't gotten to down to base camp yet where the, where your mummy is. So what if that is our sled? I really hope it isn't. Should we pursue or just think positive thoughts? Um, <laughs> Hundred and twenty feet. I'm gonna pull out a piece of copper wire and I'm gonna try and uh send use message first in the direction that the tracks are going. It's a long shot. But okay, uh, to, uh who are you trying I, to message? I assume uh the mummy. What was her name? Shinar. Shinar. Which I don't know if you got her name actually. I think you saw her sit up at base camp. And it was told it was yeah. a mummy. I think you were told to talk about it later. But yeah. I mean, I what's the word on message? I don't know if you how well you have to know the creature. Uh, I, you point your yeah. within range and whisper a message. Okay. The yeah, that's hear it. that's good enough. Um, so you point in that direction and you don't get a response coming from that way. Okay. And then I will turn around in the direction of where the base camp is. About how far away is it? Does it look? You can't see it from here. Okay. Well, whoever it is is not within 120 feet. 
the the sled tracks that we're seeing is it coming from the location we came from and then veering off or is it like a different set that's coming from a different location and then going off in a different direction um, we're heading you don't know if it came directly from base camp but it came from the path you took to get up here oh shit what what do these footprints look like like are they axe beak do a survival and check for me uh, I'll probably okay, assist okay. him on that. Yeah. Okay. If you want to do your own, or if you want to give him help. Well, be their way for me. Well, be their way for you. Uh, 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 um. Why the hell can't I find the page? Uh, so you know they're not axe speak, but you don't know what they are. Very hmm. large, though. Are they? Human-ish? Like, do they look like humanish footprints or more like animal footprints? Just in general shape. They aren't... They don't look like paws, no. They seem like some kind of upright footprint. Okay. Oh, decisions. <laughs> how, do we know roughly how long to base camp? Um... It's under an hour uh, to get back to base camp at this point. With that check, um, can I tell how fresh this is? Uh, with that check, you know that with the winds that have been on this mountain, it would have been after you guys came through here. because you, Especially because you didn't see it the first time. So you know it's within the last less than a day. Okay. Either way, we need to head back down to base camp. Probably check on your mo your your friend, your mommy. We need to, if this isn't our sled, we need to bring Garrett and uh, Paralu down to the base camp so they can get going. Yes. Um, and where our stuff is, if it is our sled, we need to make sure that the rest of the dogs and our and Shinar are safe. Yes, I agree. No point in chasing a sled either if it's not even ours, so... Alright, so you guys continue further down the mountain, back to base camp. Uh, you get down there, and you do see uh, uh, sh uh, the figure of Shinar, who is still bundled up, uh, so you can't tell that she's a mummy, uh, in her heavy winter clothing. Uh, you see the five dogs are, they're still tied up, but they're not barking like they were before, um, because they've been taken care of. Um, and in fact, uh, between the five of you, there's going to be now missing, not missing, but used up. It's... 11, 11 rations. So however you want to disperse it. Between your axe beaks and the dogs, uh, Shinar was feeding them. Because um, it had been a full day, and they hadn't been fed yet. So uh, however you guys want to split. I assume the people with the axe beaks will take the axe beaks, which is the two rations per axe beak. Um, okay. And then however you want to split up the five dogs. Actually, no, the five dogs are taken care of. So it's just the axe beaks. There's the, the... Is there only two axe beaks? Am I miscounting axe beaks? No. Uh, Celeste has one. Three. Orlin and Zavras are sharing one, and yeah, so there's three so, actions. Yeah, yeah. So, so six rations? I'll... So two rations per your axe beak. Okay. So Heinlein will get rid of two, Celeste will get rid of two, and then between Orlin and Zavras, figure out who's feeding your axe beak. You'll do it? I'll okay. reach into my bag and I'll, like, just walk up to Choco and just start feeding him. Alright, yeah, she, oh, uh, she I've would have named him. Boy. His name is... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, but everything's seen... There's the sled that the dogs are tied to is there. The cart that uh, Choco drags is there. And the... the you brought... You brought um, Mila's sled, correct? Uh, but it's not it's not DOG. It was Boy that dr drug it here. So, mm -hmm. yes, all your sleds are here. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, you've all returned. It's good to see. And you've brought 
brought people with. Yes, uh, Shinar, did you happen to see someone with a sled go past? I didn't see a sled, but I did see footprints appear in the snow. Um, but they they quickly moved away once I realized that they were trying to dig through our sleds. I saw the footprints. The sled started to make noise, and the 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 coverings on the sleds began to move. And then I, as I stood up, they the footprints went off. Everyone, check if you're missing anything. I'm not missing anything as I'm digging through the sled that Choco brings. <laughs> um, everybody who's checking their equipment that was left behind, give me uh, an investigation checks. I don't really have that I much will... stuff. <laughs> yeah. I will. I yeah. I didn't have anything on my axe beak. Um. I mean, other than it. Disadvantage. It's... I. This my other nat twenty. I can't use. <laughs> you know, um, which sled was it? Uh, they were digging in the, uh, the one that uh, Master Axel rides. Is that Milos? Um, I believe so. Yeah. Yes, I didn't know this Mila well. Uh, but yeah, actually, you're kind of digging through it. You aren't sure what was there to begin with, um, and you know, yeah, you were, you, yeah, you were there when the after you came out of the mines, the kobolds had already ransacked it as well. So you don't even know mm -hmm. what would have been good enough left in there. Um, but the moose hide is still there. We, so. I was gonna say everything that was that Mila brought, basic most of what Mila brought, like the goods and stuff, we did leave at. Uh, oh, you did leave the goods. That's correct. Uh, so yeah, the moose, the moose hide is still there, but you don't seem to be missing anything. Seems that she caught them in time to drive them off before they took anything. Interesting. Wait, did she have the moose hide on hers? Because I have it like on mine right now. I assumed Axel had it on his, but if it's on yours, then yeah, I mean it's still there, no matter what. Whoever has it is still there. Okay. Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem like anything's missing that you can that everybody can tell that's checked. Uh, yeah, I'll check my I'll check Choco saddlebag because I think maybe I left like part of a cliff bar in there. Let me let me investigate real quick. Wow, Come eighteen. On. <laughs> yeah, you look in there and there's no no cliff bar in there. They took my cliff bar. What what kind was it? Was it the white chocolate macadamia? Exactly that. That is the best one. We have to go it is now. the best oh. one. <laughs> Pull out both my short swords and start marching back. Up. <laughs> yeah, again, it seems like whatever this thing was, um, she only saw the footprints appearing, um, and then it left before it could get anything. I, I mean, it, it looks to me like all of our stuff is still here. I don't think we should go looking for trouble. Maybe we should try and get everybody back to town. We're still on a time crunch. Yes, of course. Good job, Shadal. You're serving us well. At least I could do for the masters. Uh, Yeah, and you guys start packing up so... Are you going to have Boy pull your sled, Axel? There's a lot of dogs around, too, aren't there? Yeah, there's five dogs on, on um, Garrett's sled, so he would be able to make it back. Uh, it's just how long you're keeping Boy for, <laughs> and which way you guys are going. Um, Garrett would suggest, is well, if I should get back, I should check in with, um, with uh, da -da -da, the place that I work. <laughs> <laughs> Um, care. Which one are you from? Care Koenig, right? Yeah, Care Koenig. I had it. I should have looked right there. Oh, uh, I should check in with the the Frozen Far Expeditions before I head back, so they know I'm still alive and kicking. Um, and then I can head back to head back to Targos. Uh, with the sled, you wouldn't need to accompany me there, but I mean, you don't have to accompany me anywhere at this point. I, you've done more than more than I could ask for. Um, but it, I mean, 
Where do you plan on going next? Well, so we make for East Haven. Let's go with Highland first. <laughs> we had two people talk at once. Oh, uh, as far as I know, we're heading down to Bryn Chander. And then what does Abra say? I thought we were going to East Haven. I might be wrong on that. We're going to I think Chandler. East Haven was our idea. Marin Chandler, that's what it was. If we missed the deadline or something like oh, that. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. I think we were just trying to decide where we wanted to try and hunt him down, but I think um, we ended up with just sticking with Bryn Chander. So I think we made plans and then Boy interrupted us and it all got yeah. kind of. Yes. Freaking Boy. Uh, and just a reminder, new moon, two days. Um, uh, which, uh, which, how are you get, how are you making your way to Bryn Are you crossing the tundra or going to cut down through the cares? I look over to Zavros. Well, um... We can go through the cares, but from what I've seen so far, it seems like every time we go somewhere, more things seem to happen. So if we go back the way we came, we could possibly avoid any more possible events. Up to you. Tundras aren't as safe as the roads, but you won't run into people looking for things as much out there. Oh, by the way, I know Boy here. Um, he's really quite fond of you. Um, I was curious. Obviously, we have a sled that is undogged, so to speak. Um, I really hate saying this, but uh, seeing as how we saved your life, is there any way we could possibly... Just get a different dog, because this dog really loves you. Yes, uh, I could, I could part with one of the others. Uh, uh, I've got uh, Hoarder here. Uh, he fights with the other dogs more than, than I care for. If you'd like to take him, probably be good for him to not be with them anymore. Oh, good. So it's, uh, everyone's happy then. Yes. And yes. I'm, like, just kind of putting my hands out, like, is this <laughs> okay to do? Yeah, you, you can go up to, up to Porter, um, and he's recepting of it. It's like, he's not, he's a bad dog. He just doesn't always get along with the other dogs, um, for whatever reason. And you were able to move him over to, to the sled that Axel usually rides on. Um... And it seems like you want to go through the tundra, if 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 what I'm reading in chat is correct. Is that the fastest way? Um, I think we're just heading back the way we came, right? I yeah, thought we were going to head back the way we came, so yeah. that we so weren't going the tundra, through the cares and experiencing more yeah. people to be so like, instead, this. Of, and it's like, fuck that, we got a thing yeah. to do. <laughs> so instead of heading to the right, I think we're headed to the tundra to Termalane and then take the roads down, like how, like how we came back up. Okay. With much uh, before experience. We, before we go, uh, um, I'll I'll go to Boy and I'll kneel down and I'll like pet him. Uh, you did a real good job there with your master. Uh, anyone could be proud of a noble and companion as yourself. Uh, and I'll give him a ration of like the moose, one of the rations that I got from the moose or whatever, uh, as a treat. He'll take it need it very quick and then jump up and lick your face um you can smell the moose meat on his breath as he does so uh yeah seems very happy to have garrett back with him uh, when you get home uh we left uh some surprise and another dog uh that belongs to a shop in east haven If you know anyone going that way, perhaps, that you trust, you can send them 
Or back to East Haven. If not, we'll come back someday. I'll, uh... I'll take a day or two to rest, and then I can bring it over myself before I start heading out on more expeditions with people. Thank you. I mean, thank you. You've saved my life, and Perry Lou is here, so can't thank you enough. And I tell him the, the shop's name. I just can't remember it, ever. <laughs> <laughs> I have it written down somewhere to you. Um, it just EDM. That's, yeah. that's the... Shop knees. <laughs> Magical EDM. dispensary or something. <laughs> yes. So, you guys. Uh, Asafi's Dangerous Mysticals. There yeah. you go. Um, Electronic dance music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can begin to head off into the tunnel if you would like to do so. Um, I'll cut you guys. I've, I have left you guys on the splash screen this entire time, haven't I? Yes. Um, I mean, there wasn't much to see anyway, so don't get too sad. But I will. I'm furious. I'm furious. <laughs> I'm so mad. Um, where are you? Icewind Dale map. Here we go. Uh, so if you, I assume you guys don't want to make any any stop offs in like the Dwarven Valley or anything. Um, no. So once the map loads for me, we can just cut straight across there. Uh, but before we go to break, I need somebody to roll me a d8 and another person roll me a d20 I got the 20 I got the 8 2 alright very cool um, so we will come back from the break and deal with that uh, this so roll and, sounds very it's, it's, the it's, <laughs> it's the dragon it's the dragon so Thank you guys so much for joining us for this first half. Uh, we'll see you in the second half after our break. Just get a little water and a little food and a little walk around and a little potty. We'll see you in a second. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, Icewind Dale, where I'm the Frostmaiden. Uh, if you missed the first half, uh, we, we dealt with the repercussions of running into a family of yetis. Uh, everybody thankfully made their way through. Zavra saw some things in his in wherever the heck he was during that time, um, and they found a they found the body of Asterix, who Axel recognized very very thoroughly, um, but she was unfortunately had been frozen to death. Um, and then they made their way down the mountain and started heading out into the tundra where we are now. Uh, you guys start making your way. Uh, the first couple hours, easy enough as you make your way through. Um, you do see coming up the sled that you had passed the previous day as you came through, uh, covered in snow at this point. Up to you if you want to stop. Just you pass by it if you don't. Uh, sorry, what thing do we come across in the snow? I just so so when when you first came through this area when you were trying to escape the blizzard, there was a sled that was um, had been crashed. Uh, and you pass by it because you were in a blizzard. Fair enough. Um, but it is still there as you come back the, as almost the same way that you went through. Uh, you see it off a little ways from you. You don't, like, run over the top of it. Um, it's probably, like, 40 feet to your right. Uh, just giving you the option. If you'd like to check it out, you can. Otherwise, you can keep going. Hmm. I wonder if that could belong to the person who tried rummaging through our things. It doesn't matter at the end of the day, but... So crazy how that figure of speech becomes null and void in this wasteland. Are you saying you want to check it out? Do you want to keep going? You know... It's probably just a cart. I think we just keep going. Okay. Also, right. remember the zombie with the flail that was chasing us last time we tried to investigate something. And then the dragon as well. So let's, let's just keep going. It does That's appear that. that every time we investigate something, something crazy happens. Wait, wait, wait. 
You guys saw dragons and zombies, and you have a mummy? Why are we not looking at this cart? Well, the dragon wanted us to give it food, or we would po possibly die. Uh, Shannara, uh, that was just a coincidence that we ran into her. But someone died in the process of her actually joining us. So, probably good to just skip by this, uh, this cart. Fair point, fair point. Okay. Just saying, there's always treasure to be had. All right. Heinle, did you have something to add to that? No. All right, cool. Um, you guys... <laughs> yeah. so... Heinle's just kind of irritated. He's, he's been more distant since we... Um, killed the kid? The <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, since he learned that you killed him. All right. You guys continue on then with your axe beaks and your dog. Um... And your cart, your various sleds. Uh, continue on for a couple of more hours. Uh, make. Uh, are people looking out, or are you just kind of hoofing it and hoping for the best? I can keep a lookout. Yeah, I mean, sure, we'd be looking out. It is a fucking tundra out here. All right. I uh, can't see shit. <laughs> yeah, it is dark still. Uh, whoever wants to make uh, perception checks can. Uh, 17. I think since this is an overtime thing, it's not really something I would cast guidance on myself for. And Zavros, are you throwing up a disadvantage? There we go. 11. So, uh, Celeste, you can feel that you don't see anything coming. Um, just rocky crags every once in a while will come up and block some of the wind. But as... As you're going, you do feel the wind is picking up and starting to bite a little more as snow starts to come down as well. The wind is starting to get a bit thicker now, and so is the snow. Maybe we should make camp? Maybe there's a blizzard coming? Or a snow drift? How close are we to the... I guess we would come be coming into Termalane. It would still be a few hours out. Mm. Does anyone see any shelter? Trees? Cave? Uh, with my 17, can I see uh, any shelter? Uh, there is a smaller ridge that would help block some of the wind, but it's not going to give you total cover from a blizzard. Um, over that way, there's a little bit of, like, a, a ridge. It'll give us a little bit of cover, but not too, too much. We should, if it is going to be a blizzard, we should wait. Um, just in case we are in a bit worse condition than the last one that we tried to make our way through. We can try and use maybe hang our tents from the ridge or something to block more of the snow and the wind. If we need to. All right. Um. Sounds like you guys are heading over to that ridge, so you can do so. Um. And are you going to like try and tie tents up to make kind of a canvas wall, or what? What's the plan to try and huddle up here to? Keep safe. Yeah, I'd be grabbing my rope out, tying stuff together. If anyone has any pittance, stabbing those in the ground and like just trying mm -hmm. to make a barricade as much as possible. How many pittance did I use? Go no, I think we just used rope up the mountain, didn't we? Yeah, you just used the, the rope. I think we used a pitten on the top though, didn't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. I would add use one. Um, I have some pittance here, and I will give him, like, I don't know how many he'll need, four or five. If anyone wants to assist me in this, it'd go a lot faster. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll assist with it. I'll give you some help and some guidance. All right, so Zaurus can roll flat with uh, guidance. Uh, Axel can roll flat unless somebody wants to help him. Um, I'll help Axel. All right, and then... If Orlin wants to do anything as well, he can. It's, 21, yeah, what it's I survival. Mean? Survival. What I do. And, and if you yeah. want Zavros, it's also a D four. 
Yeah, I was about to ask you what that would be. That, that is a 24. Nice. Yeah, it's not too much help necessarily, besides just for me. <laughs> but I sit down for 10 minutes, and I cast Tensor's Floating Disc. Um, I don't know if I can do it in such a way that it's kind of floating kind of where the cliff is. So It usually only floats three feet above the floor, but like if I did it so... I don't know if it would give us more of an overhang if I put it closer to the cliff or not. You know what I mean? So it'd be higher up. If not, I'll just put it directly over me, three feet above me. Yeah, I'll you just sit under it. <laughs> yeah, you can, you, you can do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Orlin creates some kind of magical umbrella over him um, as you, as, yeah, especially as Zavris is the help that uh, um, Celeste gives you. You're able to, like, put down these these uh, tents and make them sturdy enough that they they'll able will be able to take the wind and stay in place uh for for quite a bit um as axel kind of like brings the sleds around to to help uh barricade some of the wind and keep the canvases in place as well you're able to kind of huddle underneath this this uh this makeshift lean to against the ridge as the wind and snow picks up and starts to block your vision outside of the tents. Um, Axe Beaks, I assume, stay outside, and Dog comes in with you. Uh, Porter was his name, right? Porter. I'm, like, poking my head under every now and then, because I know the last time we did some shit like this, some uh, some kitty cats were snooping around. So... Right. Well, uh, yeah, there be... I think... Uh, I think the we'll probably use the axe speaks the same way we did the last blizzard we were like camped out in, where they're gonna like try and surround us to help yeah. keep out some of the wind yeah. and, and cold. That's yeah, a uh, yeah, they kind of nest up on the outs or the parts where the the campus doesn't cover you guys to help block some of that as well. Um, um, so you wanted to look around, Zavros? You can give me a perception check at a disadvantage. A six. All right. Um, yeah, you peek out every once in a while, but the snow seems to block the majority of your uh, your vision. But about two hours into this blizzard, you peek your head out, and you see this what this light very far off in the distance. Is it in the direction of Tourmaline or not? It doesn't seem to be in the direction of Tourmaline, no. Is it over 120 feet away? Um, it appears to be, yes. You got so scared you left. Yes. <laughs> A light. <laughs> yeah, even, like, it seems very far off, but it's, like, it's still very visible through all of the snow and wind. So... Where we're at, am I it able is. to ascertain if it's north, south, east, or west of our location? Um, it is to the north. Okay. Um, not sure if anyone else has noticed this, but there's a light just to the north of here. It's very faint. Is it over at the Frankenstein place? The Frankenstein what? place? What are you talking about? Was it a reference to something that none yes, of us it got? Was. <laughs> yep. I yes, also missed the reference, so. <laughs> it was a Rocky Horror Picture Show reference. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. oh that's why I didn't get the reference, because uh, I despise that movie. I'm not a boomer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get the reference. But instead, I decided a completely different reference looking at the map. And that <laughs> reference was just Frankenstein. <laughs> a lightning bolt, you struck this tower and this thing screamed. <laughs> Frankenstein, the book, takes place in the Arctic. That's why, that's why I thought of that. <laughs> no, it's not by the Frankenstein place. <laughs> <laughs> that... Now it, it looks like a, a light. Yes. 
After I wait a little bit, does it seem like it's getting closer at all, or does it still, like, it's just out there? Um, yeah, you keep checking, about half an hour goes by, and it seems to have been getting closer. Well, uh, it seems to be getting closer. We take down the tents, and run. How bad is the blizzard? It's still incredible. Like, you can't see anything other than this light when you look out. Um, visibility I, is very, very close, so. I want to take a gamble here. Can I make an arcana check on this? Yeah. All right. Uh, I, okay, I, I'm going to preface this with, there's a very low chance Highland knows what this is. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I, I set the DC as such. But it'd be really interesting if Highland did know. So I just want to... <laughs> All right, I don't know shit. <laughs> yeah, you don't know shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you you look out and you see the light and see it just... It, yeah, I imagine it's just light. Um, Related I... to that, um, besides, like, the giant um, legend of the... Oh, I forget the name of it. The old, oh, oh, something um, that travels in a blizzard. Have I heard stories of anything like this or encountered things like this? Arcana or history? And Zavros, what were you going to ask? I was literally going to ask Axel or Orlin if there was like any creepy shit that people have heard about lights and blizzards. <laughs> and he did it for me. Wait, can I roll then if he was going to ask that? Yeah. You can roll in Arcana or history as well. 17. Yeah, yeah Axel and Orlin. With and share ideas between themselves, and um, the uh, light in a blizzard has never been good from the stories you hear. Um, it's it's very few stories you hear because, again, it's one of those things that if you're hearing the story, uh, it's usually the people telling the story are dead and they can't tell it, um, so it's not good. Zavros, if we had to go, would you be able to pick the direction? Would I be able to pick the direction? It'd be. I mean, it, question. I was like, that's north. If we head south, we'll eventually hit the road. Question. I have navigator's tools. I know it probably technically has a sextant, but would it also have a compass with it? Yeah, and like, and Zavros generally knows the directions too, just from his training. Um, it would just be keeping that direction and how quickly you'd be able to keep that direction. Because these blizzards tend to mess with things um, more than typical blizzards do. We'd be heading east and then suddenly the compass is like, wee! Yeah. It's like someone just dropped a great magnetic field in a place it shouldn't be. <laughs> I can try and help, um, um, I also want to gauge the severity of this blizzard and how long we would, like, just gauging the blizzard, like, and the distance we have left, the odds of us surviving just blitzing through this blizzard. Give me a nature, or survival, your choice, disadvantage. Both the same. Eight. Um. Yeah, you're not sure, like how far, because, uh, you you know you've already gone a couple hours, so you know you have a couple hours left, but you don't know how long the blizzard's gonna be. Is the problem? Yeah. And you know it. You know it's bad currently, uh, and the thing is closing in on you, so you don't know if you'd have time to take everything down and start going, or if you just hope it doesn't go near you or what. So. That you know as far as the location, do I need to make a roll for that? Um, determine the nearest known shelter to be completely like safe. It'd be Termaline. Yeah, and that's a couple hours out still. Okay. Um. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure I could navigate this to Termaline, but. 
Um, I'm not sure how long this is going to last and how worse it's going to get. I mean, I don't think any of us are here are keen on freezing to death, but I don't know what the hell that is. And I'm like pointing towards the light. Yep. <clears throat> so we face the light or we take our chances with the blizzard. Those are our only two choices right now. If we face the light, we're definitely facing the blizzard. What? <laughs> if the light comes here, I doubt our little lean-to is going to last if we get into an altercation with something. Hmm. It's better to uh, face the, unknow uh, the known than the unknown. So perhaps a blizzard is the better option. Yeah, at, at this point, Hyland stands up um, and grabs his bag and he starts going outside of the League 2 to, like, get on top of uh, uh, his, his axe beak. Yeah, as you as you walk out to get on, on uh, Velt, right? Um, yeah. Your axe beak. You look, and this light is close to you now, but it isn't moving closer at this point. Seems to have stopped. Um, Clo how far close? Give me... Give me yeah, because you're in the blizzard. It's kind of hard to tell exactly. Um, like, do I think it's, like, something I could run to? Do I you, think it's something that's kind of far off? Like, I, I guess I, just, just a general yeah. idea. It's less than a hundred feet, but it's not like six seconds melee feet. It's not. Yeah, like... yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Get up, go, go. That's what I, I shout that. Grab my bag. And uh, yeah, uh, Celeste is gonna follow Mister Heinlein's lead, and she's gonna jump on here, and she's gonna leave her tent that's strapped up behind. We can right. buy more. Whoops. And I'm like, not what I meant to hit. Getting the hell yes. out of here. Yeah, you guys begin to head off. Um, as as you're like checking on it and heading out, um, Zavros, in your head, you hear. You've seen death many times. This is what your fate holds. Those who claim to face the winter's wrath, behold your light. And it starts to glow as you guys start to head off. I need initiative from people. You are on oh, mounts, so you have well, a little bit. You have a little bit faster of a movement. I'm here. on a wagon. <laughs> That's so I'm like, Wee! Oh, this oh, is not a good time joking. to roll low. But I'm at three. Yeah. No, no, this hey, works I'm out. Having... I'm having suffix uh, flashbacks. <laughs> This, this will work What's out. funny is I'm the only one I think who has, who has taken damage already this session. That's not the music I want. Initiative. 19. All right. Um, we got a 19 for Zavros. Oops. Uh, Orlin has an 8. Heinlein has a three. Uh, Axel has a twelve. Celeste has a twelve. Is that right? Yeah, you both have twelve. Yeah. Um, what's your guys' dex? Uh, plus one. They're plus both one. one. Okay. Well, um, what's your number? Dex number. Thirteen. Thirteen. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yes. Goes. You guys can choose who goes first between the two of you. I'll let Axel go first. Um, and we got okay. Very cool. All right, so this thing to expedite kind of where it actually is compared to you guys. You guys are all in your mounts at this point. Um, it is about sixty feet from you currently. Axe beaks, are they in my book or no? I think they they might not have a great movement speed. Actually, hold on. 
Um, I think it's 40. That might be I'm right. I'm trying to remember. Good. It's been like a year oh. since Why am I've I used doing this. Time. I can just look up the compendium there, there in yeah. there. Uh, Battle X, uh, X speak. Uh, they have 50 movement speeds, so actually 50. pretty decent. Okay. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll give them all 50. That's fine. And then our dog friend here is stat. Uh, your dog has a movement speed of 40. It's a little bit less than next week. They, your mounts will move on your initiative. Um, who is riding Choco and who is in the cart with Shinar? Um, Portland and Axel. No, not Axel. I was just I was. assuming I was on the back since I've been on the back the last session. Okay, Unless so the X, X week will move on Orland's turn then. That's up to you, Orland. That's fine. Like, I how did you... Uh... Imagine well, this going out. I don't. I don't care either way. However, however you perceived it, it's fine. I don't want a meta game. <laughs> but I'm like 19. Well, I mean, if like you ran shit. off and jumped on it, I would just be like, I'm gonna jump on the axe beak. Yeah. So let's do that. Then. So, uh, Zavris, you are first. I do have a quick question though. Uh, yeah. How long were we sitting there for before this happened? About two and a half hours. Okay, so Tensor's Floating Disc would have ended at some point. But we also, would we have gotten a short rest, or because of the blizzard, would we have not? You could have taken a short rest, yeah. Yeah, I get that spell slot. All right. All right, Zavros is first in the turn order. This thing's about 60 feet away from you, uh, and you're going to begin to start moving here pretty shortly. All right, so am I on the axe beak, or am I on the back? You're in the cart. Orlin. Okay. Uh, as I hop onto this cart and I hear that, uh, let's see. I need to double check something. Let's see. Okay, yeah. Just wanted to double check that. Um, as I hear that in my head, that was in my head, right? Like no one else heard that? Yep, that was in your head. Okay, so after hearing that, I would turn... And I would just immediately grab my like my bow and arrow, and I'm just gonna shout. If my fate, if my fate is to die, it will be like Shion. And I just like shoot an arrow, dead ass at that like the the direction of the floating light. All right. Uh, do you want to arrange your bow I'll... attack with disadvantage? Okay. As the as the wind messes with your arrow. A 17, uh, 17 will still hit, though. Yeah, still hits. For, for nine, nine. For nine piercing. As you see, as you turn and get a good look at this thing and shoot at it, you see a humanoid figure that's emitting this light from the middle part where its hood is up, and also any, like, when the wind flaps, you see the light come out as well. As this arrow pierces it, and light starts to come out where the arrow hit it. Uh, is it too late to do the Slayer's Prey, or do I need to designate that before? Because it you doesn't need to say... do it before, yep. Okay, just making sure. Yeah. Okay. And I don't... Uh, do you need to know what the creature is to do that? No, it just says you focus your ire on a single... Uh, okay. You focus your ire on one foe, increasing the harm you inflict on it. Cool. As a bonus action, you designate one creature. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, all right, Axel. So, would you just say this is perhaps a hulking bipedal shape obscured by wind and blowing snow? Yeah. I I don't I wouldn't call it hulking. It's a Well, shape. I'm I'm a big boy, so it's all in perspective. Um <laughs> but uh seeing that Zavros has already taken a shot at it and also knowing that my dog is slower um i going to do something stupid i come off of my sled 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> You're on your sled. Um, I'm going to jump off my sled, though, and if possible, with uh, one of my hand axes, just cut the dog loose. Oh, yeah, make it an attack roll. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, ooh, that's not great. Uh, do damage. It is just leather straps, essentially. Oh, yeah, that's the wrong <laughs> button. Sorry about that. No uh, six. It would uh, not be the giant. I... Yeah, that's fine. It's it's just leather, so you you slice through it, and the dog starts to follow after the axe beaks. Um, I then am going to invoke my giant's might. So again, um, instead of more of a stony appearance, uh, growing to this larger, now more crystalline uh, form, um, and I would call out in giant and just say, oh, you may not talk. You have come for me at last. We shall see if I am worthy. And end my turn. All right. You do that. Um, Celeste. You see, you see, Axel squares up to this thing and gets very large. Do 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 you boys just go looking for trouble? Is is this what I've gotten myself into? And so I have dark vision of two hundred and twenty feet. Can I still kind of like make out like a shape of a figure? Yeah, you see, it is a humanoid shape emitting this light, but the like outside of the light itself, the blizzard does block the majority of your vision. Um, you see, do you see it's humanoid, um, with tather, tattered clothing covering the majority of its body. How far away from it could I get before I wouldn't be able to shoot it with an Eldritch Blast? I do have 120 feet of dark vision. I mean, you can see it to shoot it from where you are. It's just any... Let me double check something. Um... Da, 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 da. Oh, see ya, Tommy. Um... <laughs> Any ranged weapon, so I think that doesn't count for magical ranged attacks. So, I mean, you can see it enough to shoot at it if you'd like to. Okay, um, I'm gonna stay at least, like, 30 feet behind Axel. I'm gonna shoot the thing with Eldritch Blast, because it should still be in my range. Because it's 120 feet. Yep. Uh, for a 19. That will hit. So, seven force damage. Seven force damage. I didn't let you die to a light, to a yeti. I'm not going to let you die to some stupid fucking light. All right. This thing begins to trudge forward towards you, Axel and Celeste. Um, as it does so, it gets about 30 feet from you uh, and raises its hand uh, as this shot of cold light energy comes out at you uh axel for a 18 to hit that is my armor class all right let's see you do have resistance to this i do um <laughs> 30 half to 15 Okay, 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 I'm fine. Um, um, I'm going to use Stone's Endurance on that, actually. All right, cool. So, 15 reduced to 3. All right. You, uh, you take this cold a lot better uh, than the thing was expecting, and it falters for a second, but continues forward. Um, and you don't need to do anything else yet. As the thing trudges towards you. When it uh, ends its turn. Uh, before it ends its turn. Oh, okay. Zavros in your head again. You hear, don't run from your fate. And then it'll end its turn. Okay. So, yeah. Um, It's within 30 feet of me, correct? Correct. Uh, can I get a wisdom saving throw from it, please? As I invoke my stone ruin? Yeah. It got a one. <gasps> okay. Um, so I'll put it in the chat. But um, it is 
charmed by me for one minute. The the creature has a speed of zero and is incapacitated. It descends into a dreamy stupor. Repeats the saving throw at the end of each of its turn, ending it on a success. Read this just so I get the wording right. Uh, Unless they resist it. All right, you send out this ruin uh, to try and stop this thing in its tracks, and it hits it, but it continues to move forward. Cool, it's immune to being charmed. Great, yes. good to know. <laughs> that would have been dope, All right. <laughs> when you explain <laughs> that, I was like, watch this son of a bitch be immune to charm. <laughs> Turns I mean, out. a lot of things are, so. <laughs> uh, Orlin, you are... But that's still good information to have. You are what up is on going your on back there, Zavros? Did he get off? What? What's My internet on? completely <laughs> shit out, so I missed like two people's turns. What is Axel doing? Did he get off? Because yeah, like my internet yeah, like, the, it disconnected from my phone's Wi-Fi, then went to the house Wi-Fi, then back to my phone's Wi-Fi, and then yeah. to the house Wi-Fi. That's why everything uh, was. The last 15 minutes was Axel hopping out the sled, or cutting the strap so Dog can leave behind, and then uh, Celeste uh, was like, "I'm not letting you go," and then threw a bolt at it. Okay, or. or and then I don't know. Did you move from where you were? Did you? I, I, that's something I, I didn't. Get. I was uh, at least thirty feet behind Axel. Okay, I'm. I'm sorry, everyone, for the <laughs> no internet. Uh, uh, that's the case. I'd be like, um, yes, it appears so. Oh shit. Um, I. So how far past have we gotten? Since... You haven't moved at all yet because okay. you're the one in control of the axe beak. Okay, I just kind of. Um, how far is the figure? Uh, the figure at this point is now 30 feet from you guys. Okay, I just kind of. Uh, you know, mush Choco and have him kind of do pull a Yui and kind of go. Um, I just am trying to get more space between me and the, the figure. Um, so that we're like 40 feet, maybe 45. Uh, and then I'm gonna, um, look at Zavros. Who are you talking to? Is it's it talking thing? in my head. I'm gonna, uh, reach into my bag and pull out some salt and just throw it at his face. Uh, <laughs> at my face? <laughs> Yeah. Cast I'm going to bitch slap you evil, so hard eventually. <laughs> it's funny. That's funny that you cast that. <laughs> yeah. It's actually going to be okay. He's going to throw salt in your face. <laughs> uh, that's my All right. Um, let me double check something here. Zavro's going to have to, you know, show some tough love in return. <laughs> Very cool. Um, next on the initiative would be Heinlein. You've seen the rest of your party is now engaging with this figure. <laughs> I thought we would just run. We literally spent the last two hours being like, if we see anything, we run. Mm -hmm. uh, you already right. ran for one thing today. <laughs> okay. What do we run from? You didn't follow. Oh, it didn't run from it. That's not it running. <laughs> <laughs> not engaging isn't not running. Um, Heinlein sees people doing this. Okay, so the cart that the okay, so my guide is clearly Orlin and Zavros at this moment because I can't see shit. And you said you did like a Yui. Yeah, just kind of. I kind of just took Choco and turned around and then moved further away from the white thing but i'm not like i'm not full sprint or anything like that with chogo just getting into a better advantageous ranged position and not running okay um <sighs> he's just gonna everyone just start heading to termalane there's no reason 
for us to confront something out here where we're all going to die. There's, it's a senseless fight. Um, I can't do anything, so I am going to hold my turn, I guess. Um, I will say, at this point, you do have kind of a dim light around you from this creature. Right, but what I mean is, my intention is to run. Yeah. I can't run unless I'm following someone who knows, who can okay. see. That's fair. I'm not trying to engage with this this fight, so I'm going to hold my turn until... Um, fuck, who? Are you who? holding your turn or holding an action? Because you, if you're holding your turn, you just completely move your turn for the rest of the... Yes, that's what I'm doing, yeah. Because okay. I, I have nothing I can do right now in this circumstance until everyone gets their head out of their ass. Uh, so, sh do you want me to like say where I want to interject or do you want me to just interject when I want to go? I don't know that I... I think the only way I could let you move your turn is if you move down and you're the bottom of the initiative because mo like moving up doesn't make sense no no it's not it moving up because it's it's me not have like it's it's me holding my turn until someone else acts it's not like we're not like in a tr like that just means that i no longer have a turn this initiative round is because i'm holding it to the next one so the the penalty you can only hold action though is what i'm saying so you would. I can delay my turn. What I'm saying is, I'm delaying my turn. I'm not holding an action in response to something. I am waiting until someone else is done and then doing the turn, which okay. is yeah. what that uh, is. So it's I me. Mean, I, can, I can definitely see what he's saying. Like he sacrifices his first. I sacrifice round. a turn in the round, and then I've repositioned myself in the initiative order for the next round. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's what it's. It's either holding an action. Or delaying your turn, which is what I'm doing. Okay, so yeah. Uh, who who are you waiting for then? Is it okay, just that's what's funny. somebody running? Um, um, I will wait until after. Um, I'll I'll wait until before the creature goes. So I, I think that's after um, Celeste. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, Zavros. Uh, I'm still on the back of this sled. I'm not getting any closer to this light, but uh, I'm just going to fire another arrow towards it. This time, like, I'm getting real mad because it keeps telling me what my fate is, and fuck that. So I'm going to be doing the Slayer's Ire. Oh, right. like, I'm going to use my bonus action to do that. And as I pull this arrow and I'm just kind of aiming dead at this light, I'm just going to go, oh, you don't know my fate. And I just let the, uh, the arrow right. fly. At disadvantage. Yep, let's hope I hit. I do not hit. You do not hit. As the arrow I saw, the, I saw the nat one on the, the <laughs> D20 and I was like, nope. <laughs> Yeah, the air whizzes past this thing as the wind just, like, takes it and veers it to the left. Um, Axel, this thing is 30 feet from you. Um, seeing that everyone else stopped, which was not his intention, I have, have, um, and hearing uh, Heinlein shout out, uh, he's going to turn back to the group and say, this is, this is beyond all of you. Heinlein is correct. Get him out of here. You have bigger things to deal with. Um, and then I am going to... I'm going to approach this thing. Uh, so I'll take my 30 feet and walk towards it. All right. Um, any, anything spooky happen as I get close? Not yet. Okay, then I'm just going to try and hit it. You were you were completely washed in bright light as you move closer, but yeah, you try okay, to hit. Okay, it, a it's nine only a nine. Misses. Ooh, do I want to blow everything on this turn? YOLO, because I have a thing. I'm going to action surge to try and hit it again. Fifteen? hits okay um so i will do my damage 
So that's 12 damage. And then I am also going to invoke my fire ruin. Right. I got so much stuff to do. Um, so first of all, it's an extra 2d6 um, fire damage. And then I need a strength saving throw from the creature. It got a 21. Okay, well, it succeeds, but it takes an extra four fire damage. <laughs> All right, yeah, you, this fire rune appears over it and just puts this, like, a burst of fire over it, and it still stands in front of you. Like, some of the cloth begins to scorch a little bit, uh, but the light doesn't seem to dim at all. Um, and then just as my turn ends, I'm just going to shout over my shoulder again, Go! You have your orders! All right. Celeste? You're muted. Uh, Heinlein hasn't moved, right? He's still uh, around? No. Yeah. Yep. yep. All right. Well, you know, I hate to say it, but he's got a point. I'm going to use, I'm going to pull out one of my torches, and I'm going to use my action to cast light on it. I'm going to pass it over to Heinlein. We do have a bigger job to do, so he can see. All right, you pass the torch to Heinlein. Do you do anything else with your turn? Um, Yeah, I'll move. I'll move my 50 feet. All right, yeah, you ride on on your axe beak. Start getting out of there. Because uh, I could still shoot him on my next turn, because I'll still be in range. Uh, it is this creature's turn, this light creature. Um, as it gets swung at by well, Axel. Oh, it, yeah. I, I was going before it. Oh, I thought you said after. Yeah, go ahead then. Um, um, and I say, um, Axel, I was referring to you too. Um, there's, it's a senseless fight for no reason. Now get going. Um, and then, um, there's just, you say it's beyond people, but that doesn't mean it's, it's, it's something you have to deal with. We can literally just run from this senseless fight. There is no reason that we are doing any of this right now. You all seem to want to fight and battle literally everything without putting a real thought into why you're fighting what you fight. You kill baby yetis. You fight random lights. I think you guys need a little bit more purpose to why you wield a sword. Um, and with that, I am going to cast... Um, I am going to cast... Bless on I think it's makes it ten rollers uh sorry to three creatures um I'm going to bless uh Axel um Zavros and uh um Whirlin. Since they're the ones who have yet to get moving yet. So you all have bless which is a D4 for Attack roll, saving throw, attack rolls and saving throws. Yeah. Um, in my defense, I'm not controlling. I know you're in. The, I know, no, I know, I know. You're you're literally in a cart. Oh, actually, you know, what? I take it back. Um, it's going to be on um, Axel, Zavros, and Shinar. Um, and then from there, I start following uh, uh, Celeste. <laughs> All right. Which cart is Shinar in? Is it with uh, Zavros? She's with you guys, yeah. Okay. All right. So it is this thing's turn now. Um, as Axel was swinging at it, I don't need my fingers there anymore. Um, he's going to swing back at you, Axel, or this thing. It's not doesn't have a gender technically. Uh, for a nine, so it kind of misses. Um, but that wasn't its main purpose. As it continues to turn and looks at Zavros and raises its hand. 
And once you hit again, you hear. You I swear to God, if you do power word kill, I'm gonna fucking throw my <laughs> goddamn laptop across this room. <laughs> you can't escape this, and it, as it casts another beam of this cold light at you, um, twenty to hit. Yeah, it hits. Was that with disadvantage? Hit. Um, it does not have disadvantage because it's a magical effect, much like uh, Celeste didn't have disadvantage. Oh. That's weird. Yeah, it's just is, it's just weapon that's attacks. That's the way protection from protection oh, wait. several benefits. Oh, protection, yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. Let me double check. Sorry, I forgot that was up. Against Let me just target. double check. Uh, uh, certain types of creatures. Protection grants several creatures of those types have disadvantage. All right. Um, let me double check. Not, I don't know if it's one of those types, but Yep, yep. Nope. That's very fair. Um, does a 14 hit? Motherfucker. <laughs> I, tr oh. I tried to help you, Zavros. I don't know. I know. No, For some reason, Zavros and, uh, Zavros and, uh, you know, uh -huh. his armor class sucks. Also can't be charmed, possessed, frightened. All right, cool. Just have to double check that. Thank you for reminding me on that. No, you're fine. Uh, 14... I think you need to throw more salt in his face. <laughs> 14 cold damage. <laughs> That's why I missed my fucking no, attack. Sorry, 17 cold damage. I'm down on the cart. <laughs> He's down on That's the cart. That's exactly what he needed to hit. <sighs> cool. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Um, and as this happens, this bonus action goes off. And uh, Axel, I need you to make a constitution saving throw as this light begins to get brighter. Remember to add that D4. <laughs> total. That is perfect on the mark. You do not get blinded by this thing as the light gets stronger. <laughs> Orlin. Okay. Um, seeing what happened, uh, I look back in the cart. Um, and as I'm doing this, I like outstretch my hand toward the, the creature and like rest it with my other hand and start blasting uh, magic missiles at the uh, thing. And I look at Shinar and I say... Final request. Go back up, Axel. Um, and I just shoot these magic missiles at level two. So two, four, five, five. All right. Um, total of sixteen damage as these missiles impact on this, this creature in front of Axel here. Um, and then I will start moving the cart, but I'm still waiting for Shinar also to get off. So I start, like, I turn the cart and maybe go, like, 10 feet toward Highland. All right. Um, Shinar actually, well, no, Shinar will move after Highland by Highland. It's weird. See, he technically took his turn to turn, but he put it back. It's fine. He can take his turn again. Um, Highland, it's your turn. No, I, I, I'd be repositioned in the initiative. So okay. I would just permanently be at that spot. That's right, what I was cool. trying to say. Okay, yeah. That is fine, then. I will put you there. So, yeah, uh, she it is her turn next, so she'll just get off as you start going. Cool. Um, and you see this figure stand up and start moving towards the uh, Axel. She isn't able to get there this turn. <laughs> she does start moving that way. Um... Next in the turn order is Zavros. As ice crystals begin to form over your body, I need a death saving throw. Whisper to me, please. No, no, you don't, dude. You don't need that. What you talking about? I do. I do. I really do. Uh, does Bless deal with death saving throws as well? Uh, three me. Throw? Yes, it does. You have advantage. Or is it a plus four? Plus, four. plus four. Plus four. You have a plus four. You have to, uh, Were, did you get that? No, I haven't gotten it yet. Oh, let me. That's weird. It rolled on mine. It said to GM. Let me just message you yeah, what just it was. It to me. Oh, hold on. I'll switch my name back from GM. Okay. <laughs> Where the hell are you? I'm just going to do it in Discord because it's that's a fine. long, drawn out process to yeah, no tell you what I got. 
Um, on top of that, I was going to say something else. Oh, yes, sorry. Um, bless is concentration, right? I, I got that roll. I need your uh, I need your bless roll, the D4. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yep, no worries. Hold on, let me just bring that up. Um, yes. All right. Um, so from both of you, from from Zav, sorry, not Zavros, uh, Heinlein and Orlin, any Constitution saving throws as this wind and snow just pelt you as you're trying to concentrate on these spells. Okay. Eleven. Eight. Bless does go down. Protection yeah. from good and evil stays up for what it's worth. Cool. All right. Um. It is Axel's turn. Um, seeing that Orlin has uh, started to leave as well, um, and probably most of them are, because it's got to be fairly loud. I'm assuming Heinlein is already out of like easy earshot at this point. Um, Especially over the winds. Yeah. Um, I'm going to see... Shinar um, coming towards me, I'm going to drop my pack and say, change of order, Shinar. Go bring this to uh, bring this to Bryn Chander and wait for them there. And I'm going to attack All because right. I'm her master too. <laughs> they do uh <laughs> What is it called? Facing uh, charisma checks? Persuasion? <laughs> I have to actually yeah. check, because there is a rule for, like, con conflicting orders for her. Um, oh, the bless... Well, this is backing me up. You didn't say to stay and fight and die with me. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. to back me up. True. Uh, yeah. What was that, Baka? Uh, the war pick hits. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't have bless. I forgot to unclick that. Uh... <gasps> I should have. I was looking uh, at the wording of command, and it doesn't affect uh, undead. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to override actually, everyone. <laughs> okay. It should actually be 11 total. I unclicked the wrong box. All right, cool. Uh, this is, yeah, it's a big hit. This thing staggers for a second and it recomposes itself. Um, and then I'm just going to look at it and say... I was supposed to look at the uh, creature and say, Winter was always supposed to be here, and I was supposed to stop it. I've done a piss poor job of it. Perhaps this will make up for it. All right. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm just checking on Shinar's stuff. Okay, cool. Um, Celeste, it is your turn. Yeah, so. Being close to Highland, she kind of looks at him. Well, Mister, do we keep keep going? What are we gonna? Are we just gonna let him die because he fought a needless fight? And I'm gonna use my bonus action, and a beam of light is gonna come out of my stick into Beast Boy. Ever see? Um. That's a d6. So it's a three. Three points of healing, so he's no longer unconscious. All right. Um, and I'm just going to keep, I don't know. Um, I'm going to keep going because right. that's what Highland told me to do. And yeah. She's here to follow his orders. All right, you keep moving, following Highland, who, would, who it's now his turn. Um, even I don't know what what kind of chance we'd have against fighting that thing right now. It seems to be a little bit higher higher purposed than just someone out there trying to serve its own serve you know, its own senses. Unfortunately, the, the idiot 
cut off his only form of transportation doing this. I don't see really another way that we can deal with this. It's just... And he, like, clutches... Um, he clutches the stone that he has. I understand, and I... It shouldn't have been him. Keep moving. There's... There's more purposeful fights out there that can mean something than what we're dealing with right now. You can only tell... You can only command a soldier so much before they just choose not to follow orders. And, like... He's, he's like, saying this stuff, and he's, like, very distracted while he's saying it. It doesn't seem like he's, like, saying it to you, but he's, like, saying it to himself. Um, Sorry, it's just... Even with this light, this, this blizzard's making it a little harder to see. Um, and he keeps moving forward, and his eyes are, like, crystal... Like, his, his, like, eyelashes and his cheeks are starting to, like, crystallize a lot more. Um... And as he says this, and he's, like, not paying attention to behind him, um, he moves, he follows forward. Uh, and also, what he leaves behind as he's leaving, it's almost like a, like a ghostly figure separates from his body as he moves forward. And... Everyone else who's behind, besides me and Celeste, would see an orc, a ghostly orc with a gaping hole in its chest standing there as it slowly marches forward towards the light figure. Um, I don't know if it gets there in time, but its purpose is essentially to move towards it and fend off whatever creature this is to the best of its capability. Yeah, it can't make it there this turn, but it does. Yeah. Do you want it to dash, or is it just moving normally? I I'll say it's it, it'll dash, but like it's almost like instead of it running, it's like whoosh, 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 as it gets closer, uh, like, and then yeah, and then we yeah. head off. Yeah, it starts to move, like, phasing to different spots as it moves closer. Yeah. Um, it is this thing's turn. The the creature you're fighting, Axel. Um, let me get back to his page. As as once again it uh, spins to hit you. <laughs> it doesn't roll well on those attacks. Uh, nine. This is again. Um, and it's going to take its beam attack, but it's at disadvantage because you're in within melee of it. Hey, two twos. So yeah, it's only a five to hit, so it misses again as it like it spins to try and hit you and from all the hits it's taken, like, its knee almost buckles as it tries to bring its hand up to shoot a ray at you. Um, but, in fact, misses. Uh, Orlin. If you survive this somehow, meet us in Bryn Shanda. Blow your drink. And I'm gonna just turn around and help one more time by blasting a level 2 magic missile. A total of 15 damage. Yeah. yeah, actually, see all these missiles impact this thing, and it's not taking them well as it again just it crumples a little bit, but put, finds the energy to stand back up to face you as only begins to leave. Uh, Shinar will. Oh, go ahead. Uh, then I'm. I'll start moving out. Um, yeah. on the bird. You know. Yeah. Start. Forty feet or whatever. 50 feet uh, with the axe beaks. Um, yeah, Shinar is able to grab... Uh, she moves around this thing to grab your bag and begins shambling off after everybody. Um, <laughs> uh, Zavros, you... Once again, we're starting to see these trees taking form over your eyes. Um, but before they could completely form, your whole vision is filled with this light, bright blinding light as you hear 
that's not your fate. You stay with me. And then you're, you're shot back as you get this healing, uh, healing word from Celeste, and you are back up uh, in the back of a cart. One less person with you, and ice shards forming over your skin. I stand up because I'm just not liking what this thing's been telling me. I'm I'm not picking up when it's putting down. I'm I'm refusing. So like I'm like stand up. I'm like gripping my chest, just getting blasted. I just kind of stand up a little bit, hobbling over. I'm severely fucked up. Let's go. I believe what they say here <clears throat> is fuck you, and I'm just gonna. Bonus action with my Slayer's Ire, and I'm assuming I'm still within range since I got like a 120 foot range yep. with this yep. uh, longbow. You're just in range. And so. as we're taking off, I'm just gonna try to hobble my arrow into place and just let it go before I just drop down to one knee. Yeah, you can do that disadvantage. A Fuck. 12, a 12 just misses as it, as it, Damn it. takes it and it goes right over his shoulder. As this sled continues on, Axel. Um, I'm just gonna continue to swing at this thing. All right. Ooh, only a that, six though. It, and that one's gonna miss. He's <laughs> just swinging this war picked out. Like this thing is moving so strangely now after all the hits it's taken that you aren't quite able to catch it as you try to bring your war pick through these heavy winds and miss. Celeste, you are moving away. Uh, about how far away is Axel and this light creature thing? At least 100, because you've taken yeah, two. I think it's just I, uh, yeah, 50. I took 50, and I took 30. And it, you are already 80. a little further back from it. I'd say it's at 100 at this point. Okay. Uh, so Axel is out of my healing light. Uh, so, um, I am going to use my action, and I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast at this thing again for a nine. Nine, nine misses. Again, you just aren't um, able to quite pick it out in the blizzard as you shoot at it. And I'm gonna toss another Healing Light as a bonus action to... Um, Zavros. All right. We do so. For six this time. Uh, and then I'm going to use my movement to go 50, 50 more feet. Leaving him 150 away. feet behind. Heinlein. Uh I continue following. Um, I've gotten kind of silent with this at this point. So I continue following. Um... However, these, this this orc continues to move towards the figure. And it assault. makes it to it within its movement. Okay, and it will continue its assault. All right, so it gets to attack then. Um, uh, okay, cool. Checking to see. Um, what's your AC? <laughs> okay, so as it swings twice with this axe one connects with it uh sword. it's got a sword that's right we've yeah, we've, sword, we've sorry. Sword, yeah. yep we changed it that's right that's right um, um do I have does it have a specific bonus because if you want i can do the rolling for it if it's got a specific bonus I can, I, so you don't have to role play with yourself <laughs> um i mean it's fine because um if you want to role play this how does this orc strike down this uh creature <laughs> um so it like gets over there um and it like phases from behind uh, Axel, who just misses, and it swings down at first, and the thing misses. Like it looks like it, it like the first attack misses. However, um, having some like dead on it, you just like and like it sounds like this weird ghostly like uh uh. uh sounds uh, uh from the afterlife that if you if you spoke orc you'd kind of get and it'd say um you'd hear um there is only one true fate in this world and it stabs into it 
and twists and then kills the guy um, and fades away. Yeah, you see the sword plunge in and twist, and as it does so, actually you're looking at this thing, and the light just disperses from its from its body, and left in front of you is uh, the still the tattered cloaks of this person, but a skeletal face with with uh, skin clinging to it as it falls, deanimated into the snow. Did you just lag switch kill this this light? <laughs> <laughs> Um, fuck, I wasn't expecting to live through this. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what do I do now? Um, that's just, uh, that's just faint telling you you're meant to live another day. Because I have my big form for like a minute or something like that. Um, yeah. Um, so I think while I still have that, I'm... I'm um, just going to take the body of this thing and just, like, whip it into the lean-to uh, that we still have set up. And then uh, spend the rest of my time essentially just, like, almost making a makeshift igloo. out, Like, around the igloo, just piling up more snow to make more of a snow barrier. And then um, as it runs out, I'm just going to um, climb into the igloo and wait out this blizzard. All right. Actually, I'll also, because Shinar's feet away, I'll call out to her and be like, wait, it's dead. We can hang out in here. We'll make the trip together. <laughs> All right. You you get Shinar to go back and you to hang out there. Do you, your dog's not here currently. Do you try to find it or is it no, just lost I, the winds? I consider the dog, I was letting it free from the sled so that it wouldn't die out here with me. So. Right. So Axel and Shinar spend the rest of the time in the blizzard. Yes, Orlin. We're only like a like a hundred feet away. Do, do we know? But do you're we see also him? in a blizzard. Also um, in a blizzard. And going the opposite direction, unfortunately. Okay. Um, Can I roll so a perception? Will... Are you sure with disadvantage? <laughs> no, if you right. can roll a nat twenty on disadvantage, I will let you see this. Double nat twenties. I want to <laughs> assist him. <Nat> <laughs> <laughs> you do not, unfortunately. Um, but you guys continue onwards. Uh, but you are continuing onwards in a blizzard. So if you're going to... Uh, Zavros, uh, you can do a survival with advantage if Celeste is helping. Or not, yes. it'd, be, it'd be flat because you're still exhausted level one. Seven. Uh, it's... Even slower going than it would be because you're in the blizzard. You're, you're pushing your way through. I do need constitution saving throws from everybody but Axel as you're pushing your way out of, through through this blizzard, trying to get any kind of headway. Weapon oh. <laughs> <laughs> it like my my thing like scrolled down. I clicked the wrong thing. Uh, there's the double nat twenties almost. There's twelve. Yeah, you don't um, know if it's the um if it's the uh. The adrenaline from what just happened. Um, and Zavros, you're able to like scrape off these ice shards on you. Uh, but you're able to hold out as you continue through this blizzard. Can I call and... out... Order! Order! And whistle? Yeah, make it an animal handling. Alright, cool. I don't know. You, don't uh, you got a three because his name is Hoarder. <laughs> See, it I is thought... hoarder. It's P O R T E R. Oh, I thought you said hoarder. Nope. I, thought... Hoarder. Okay. I thought he said hoarder too. The only reason I knew it was porter because like the third time I finally heard porter and I was like, oh, that's weird. I thought it was hoarder. <laughs> that's just my terrible uh, mumbling. But yeah, yeah I was right guys... there with you. <laughs> you guys continue off in the blizzard. Uh, it'll take you a while to make it to Termalane, but you will make it there. As far as Axel and Shinar. What are you doing to hold out in this blizzard? You are Goliath, so you can take it longer than most, but it's still not great conditions. No, bro. Not with Shinar. <laughs> no, he's... I just had this all on dead <laughs> company. I can't do that. Um, <laughs> um, I, I mean, I still have all of my packs. So I have like my bedroll and things like that. Um, even though I don't need it for 
light, I may um, just have, because I have uh, 10 torches with me, just torches going for a little bit of heat, at least in this protected area. Um, and then really probably as much as I can, like blocking up the entrance of like my pack. And then like even some, if there's any remaining snow inside of here, just to make it as wind tight as possible. Yeah. Um, do a survival check for me. So okay. you could you could also use your sled as like a barrier too. You yeah. Cut that off from the dog. Yeah, you Ooh. fortify this thing very well, um, and you you bring in your Goliath ingenuity and constitution and start to ride out the rest of this storm alone with a mummy. And as we pan out from this little igloo with a, t a torch lighting what little it can, we'll end the session. Ooh. So... Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we got a split party to end off, so this will be fun to look into next session. Um, yeah. Combats are always fun to see how long they're going to take people to go through. Um, so we got to we got to deal with a cold walker for a little bit there. That was fun. Uh, so thank you guys all for joining us. Thank you all my players for joining me tonight uh, and going through what I threw at you. Well, technically, you threw it at you because you rolled the, rolled the dice and got it. Uh, <laughs> Very fortuitous. <laughs> but, yeah. We, we'll we we'll see. Get you guys next time. Remember, Sundays, Mondays, we're here, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for other games, so be sure to check us in. It looks like we're we're raiding Chaotic Colleen, so yeah. be sure to say, say hi to them for us and say, hey, raid is that what the kids do now on Shadow Twitch? They say Legend. raid Not when they sponsored. go to other channels. They join the Discord and say raid. Raid Shadow Legends. Because they get that ant killer spray. Join now. Yeah. All right. Be sure to join all of us on social media. Swindows Den everywhere. See you next time. Peace.